Drew swings the ball to Fletcher Lawyer, who shoots a three. He misses. Edie gets the rebound and throws it into the basket while being fouled at the same time. An and one for Zach Edie. Boy, the makers at the line for an and one. Purdue's degree plus gives students the chance to earn a Bachelor of Science and one from the College of Liberal Arts, both in four years. Check out the Liberal Arts degree plus. See if and one is right for you. That foul on Tyler Wall as Zach Eady makes the foul shot. Purdue leads three to nothing. Well, as much as Purdue liked that first defensive possession, they love that offensive possession as well. You get Fletcher Lawyer a clean looking three, and then Zach comes through on the boards. Boilermakers, the early 3 0 lead, 60 seconds into the ball game. Badgers with it. Klesmet will rise and fire and hit from 15. Max Klesmet, he can get heated up early in a ball game, and if so, that's trouble for the opposition. Purdue up 3 2. Hepburn guarding full court against Braden Smith. He breaks it by throwing it to midcourt to Trey Kaufman Wren, right back to Braden Smith, and now Purdue will run half court offense. Boy, Wisconsin testing Braden Smith yeah, early. Be pressuring him early and often. <laughs> Inside to Edie, back out to Lawyer. Left wing it goes Lance Jones. Now to Braden Smith, firing it into Edie. Shot clock at three. Out to Braden Smith. Three on the way. Bullseye! Braden Smith with a triple. Oh, Braden Smith answers the call with a huge triple time early from the top of the key. A nice inside out action from Big Z back to Braden. Purdue six, Wisconsin two, 18 15 to go. Wall another three. Misses. Tyler Wall, who's made three three pointers all season, is 0 for 2 in this game shooting threes. And we've only played two minutes. Taking the bait. Inside a Trey Kaufman ran against Wall. Lowers the left shoulder. Spins. Now shoots with a right-handed hook shot. Misses. But Edie pushed off on the weak side. He pushed off of Steven Crowell. Then Klesman gets into the chest of Edie. Now Edie talking to Crowell. Klesman talking to Edie. Officials stepping in to separate the players. Foul again. And now double technicals. Steven Crowell. Yep. Crowell a technical. Edie a technical. And that is bad news for Purdue. That's two early fouls fouls on Zach Eady. The first on a push-off, the second on a technical foul. Too much extracurricular talking with Crowell. And that, if you're going to play it uh, even Steven, who gets the worst end of that deal? Purdue, because Zach Eady has two fouls. Wow, that's, I mean, I just feel like as an official, Zach is retreating towards his, towards the other side of the court. And, you know, guys are jawing at each other a little bit, but Zach's retreating. He's not up in his face. you got to understand that. You're calling the second foul on Zach Eady if you call a technical there. Like, you just have to understand the moment. Yep, burn to the right wing. Purdue up 6-2, to two, but playing without Zach Eady, 17-45 mark. Into the corner, A.J. Store trying to back down Lance Jones from that left baseline now. Spins to the right, shoots and misses a short jumper. Rebounded by Store. He went back towards the basket, lost the ball out of bounds. Baseline left, they say last touched by Purdue. Well, it's nice to see Braden get up there and elevate and try to get that rebound. Looking good as far as jumping on that leg, but unfortunately not able to corral it. He had it for a moment, then Storr uh, Storr just took it away from him. Klesman had the ball taken away from him. Stolen by Purdue and then stolen right back by Wisconsin in midcourt. And now we have what? Oh, the shot clock. Possession. Were, yeah, yep. So Purdue had stolen the ball. Fletcher Lawyer tipped it away. Lance Jones grabbed it. But as Lance started to race up court left to right, he then lost the ball at midcourt. Knocked away from him, recovered by the Badgers. Wisconsin will get the ball back. 27 on the shot clock. Wisconsin works right to left here in this first half at Minneapolis. I guess you could maybe state that Lance's first dribble was gaining possession there, but it's probably even close to say Lance ever even had real possession. Lesman, top of the key, down to wall, left block. Spins against Kaufman Wren, kicking in the corner for a Hepburn three. The right corner for Hepburn, no, and a push off this one against Tyler Wall on a weak side rebound. So each team has had a foul go against them where they were pushing off for weak side rebounding position. Wall with a foul. Zach Eady had a foul in that same scenario. Wall will leave the game. He'll be replaced by Marcus Ilver, a 6'9 junior from the country of Estonia. Well, how about that? Tyler Wall and 
Zach Eadie been battling in that matchup back and forth, and now now they're one on the floor. Drake Kaufman ran down low, scores as he went right at it, right at Prowl. Excellent pass from Braden Smith. Drake Kaufman Wren going to have to do the yeoman's work in the post now for Purdue. Boilermakers leading 8-2. to two. Star at, the, uh, Star at the free throw line, I should say. Leaning in, missing a layup. Prowl with a rebound, put back. Stephen Crowell, who did not score in the game against Purdue on Sunday, has two points here, making it Purdue 8, Wisconsin 4. Mason Gillis into the game for the Boilermakers. He's who replaced Zach Eady, by the way, just a moment ago. Right elbow, jumper, good. Lance Jones rising, firing, scoring. That's a great sign to see him get that mid-range jumper to go. He's had some uh, issues as far as that mid-range, getting the ball to go down. Crowd down low, uncontested layup, and a foul lawyer. Lawyer came over late. He was late on the help side defense, slapping the head of the, uh, of the layup from Stephen Crowell. And this will be an and-one opportunity for Stephen Crowell, Lawyer's first foul. And we just saw the replay up above, and Fletch definitely does get him across the top of the head. It probably didn't affect Crowell a whole lot because Crowell having that big size advantage. But uh, he definitely gets him, and it's, so it's a good call there by the official to give Crowell this and-one opportunity. But uh, I'm sure their poor rotation probably on Fletcher's part has to get there sooner. Crowell does make the foul shots. Good free throw shooter at 74%. 10-7 Purdue, 16.05 to go first half. Purdue playing without Zach Eady for the moment. Two fouls early in the game has him on the bench. Lance Jones, left elbow, mid-range jumper again. It is pure. Lance Jones, right elbow the first time, left elbow the second. Purdue's up 12-7. Lance looking good. Says, I'm not going to hit the rim on either of these pull-up Jays. Really smooth. Damari McGee, six-foot junior from Racine, is subbed in for Wisconsin. Prowl down low, right-handed hook shot, no. Rebounded Camden Heidi, who subbed in for the Boilermakers. The 6'7 redshirt freshman. Wisconsin playing its third game in three days. Gillis a three in the right wing. It was long, rebounded by Jonathan Blackwell, who was subbed in for Wisconsin. The 6'4 freshman from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. McGee, top of the key. Throws it further near the top of the key to Stephen Crowd. Dribbles once, now gives to Ilver, left wing outside the arc. To Chucky Hepburn, inside to McGee. Ah, Kamari McGee, I beg your pardon. He got open for a left-handed layup. First scoring of the game for McGee. Well, Braden tried to embellish a little bit of contact from McGee as he was cutting down the lane. Tried to get a little bit of a charge call off the ball. The official said, uh, we ain't going for that. And unfortunately, that fall allows McGee to get the easy lay in under the basket. 12-9, Purdue the lead. 14.50 in the first half. Braden Smith, top of the key, inside to Kaufman Wren, spinning on Crowell, trying to score over the left shoulder and does with a bank shot. Well, Trey doesn't have a lot of confidence in his left hand right there. Goes right shoulder, but instead of trying to finish with the left, he comes back across his body with the right. Makes it probably a little bit more difficult, but it's an impressive finish nonetheless over the top of the defender. 14-9 Purdue. Ilver a three straight away. No miss. Badly rebounded by Mason Gillis of Purdue. Quickly ahead to Braden Smith. Left the right in the right in the white uniform. To Lance Jones. Oh, he threw up a transition three that nearly missed the entire backboard apparatus. Rebounded. Wisconsin. That was a poor-looking shot. That's pulling it nicely, Rob. <laughs> I'm trying to be kind to my good buddy Lance Jones. Uh, well, Lance didn't hit the rim on that one either. <laughs> 14 minutes to go. All the way to the rim. Blackwell blocked, but then picked up by Ilver and laid in. Camden Heidi blocked the shot, but Ilver was Johnny on the spot to lay it in. Purdue comes over, gets beat there, but Cam Heidi, a good recovery using the athleticism, but unfortunately, as two guys contest that shot at the rim, it allowed the easy putback for Ilver. Braden Smith to the left elbow on a dribble drive. Leaves it on a weak side pass. Oh, Trey Kaufman ran had a layup. Didn't get it to go, but he was fouled in the process. Timeout on the floor. 13-34 to play in the first half. Purdue 14, Wisconsin 11 on a Central Indiana Honda dealer scoreboard. This is Watermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. The time to save is now. It's Ford Truck Month at your local Ford dealer. And right now, we're offering special deals on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s in stock. That's right. Get great incentives on the best-selling trucks in America for 47 straight years. But you can't wait. This is a limited-time offer, and it's your last chance to save big on a 2023 Ford F-150. Check out all the great Truck Month deals at buyfordnow.com. And then get over to your local Ford dealer today. Hey, Purdue fans, say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. 
We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. At Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First, we do more than lend. We lift up our rural communities that we serve, too. From our day-to-day -day business of providing reliable credit to farmers and rural residents, to our community investment efforts and scholarships for college students, we help Indiana's rural communities find their next level. Visit fcma.com to learn more about how we work with partners like Purdue University. Boiler up. Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First are equal opportunity lenders. I get paid to do this. How cool is this? Wow. <laughs> like you get paid to be a coach. And for me, I don't think there's a place out there better for me than Purdue University. Hi, I'm Kate Young, host of This is Purdue, the official podcast of Purdue University. Over the last three years, my conversations with Boilermakers have been serious, informative, and in the case of that exchange with former Purdue basketball coach Gene Cady and current head coach Matt Painter, downright fun. Be sure to follow This is Purdue on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. This is Ethan Morton, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. This broadcast is copyrighted by the Big Ten Conference Incorporated. Any use of this broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Big Ten Conference express written consent is prohibited. Rob Blackman and Bobby Riddell, courtside in Minneapolis, the Target Center. Purdue 14, Wisconsin 11. We have 13-34 remaining in the first half. The early story of this game, the fact that, well, there are two. <laughs> Braden Smith is playing. And appears to be playing you know, 100% right. full go. Zach Eady is not playing, but it's because of two fouls. One a technical, the other a push-off on a rebound. Yeah, the, the two kind of front court players that get all the attention for both teams, Tyler Wall on the Wisconsin side, and of course Zach Eady from a Purdue perspective, both saddled now with the two fouls, and it'll be interesting to see what the coaching staffs do regarding when do they pull the trigger to put those guys back in. At the foul line will be Trey Kaufman Wren. He was fouled as we went to the break. Two foul shots here. Miles Colvin has subbed in for Purdue, the 6'5 freshman from Indianapolis. He really played well yesterday for the Border Makers. First foul shot is missed off the back of the rim for TKR. Yeah, that's one TKR would like to have back. He had some contact, but he got enough separation after the contact that with his size, you'd like to see him be able to finish that, especially with the strong right hand on the right side. He fortunately is able to get that second free throw to go, though, to at least get one point out of that trip. Five points in the game for Trey Kaufman. Rent, Purdue 15, Wisconsin 11 now. 13-27 to go. We're in the first half. Wisconsin in red, Purdue in white. Nolan Winter subbing in. A foul away from the ball on Trey Kaufman Wren, I think. Yes. Yep. Trying to reach in on a pass. Yeah, a little overzealous trying to get out there and deflect a pass, and Caleb's going to come in for it. Caleb first, 6'10", junior from Fort Wayne. Boy, both coaches are really going deep <laughs> to the bench early here. Yes, they are. And I don't blame them. Nolan Winter, the 6'11", freshman, Lakeville, Minnesota, playing right now for Wisconsin. McGee, left elbow, stopping to Winter, faking a three, dribbling in from the top of the key, giving back to McGee, left wing extended. Now to Store. He will shoot from three on the right side and make it. A.J. Store, a catch-and-shoot three, his first scoring of the game, and it's 15-14, to 14, Purdue the lead. And Coach Painter really displeased with Lance Jones right there. It's late shot clock. You've got to be right there on the catch, have a hand up on A.J. Store. Gillis fakes a three, top of the key, throws it into Caleb First, and he was fouled. Nolan Winter pushed him in the back as the pass was coming towards Caleb First. Max Plesman subbing back in for Wisconsin. Purdue playing with Colvin, Jones, Gillis, First, and Heidi. How much? How many minutes do you think this lineup's uh, played together this year? Probably none, I would assume. Lance Jones, top of the key, will pull the trigger. He thought he was fouled. It's an air ball, and it's rebounded by... Actually, it's a foul on Klesmet trying to steal a rebound away from Heidi. First foul on Klesmet. 
16 fouls already on the Badgers at the 12:36 mark. Lance Jones will exit. Yeah, you can, I can see right now, Coach Painter is just what you're talking about. Talking to Lance about, hey man, pointing right in the spot where uh, Store stuck that three in his face. Yeah, let him catch and shoot a three. Replaced, by the way, by Braden Smith is Lance Jones. Golden inbounds and had it stolen. Stolen by Klesman on the inbound. Badgers the ball here after the takeaway. Just Purdue's second turnover of the game. Purdue had 11 yesterday against Michigan State. Winter on the baseline against Caleb First. Dribble to the right elbow. Now to Klesman right wing. Throws in a corner where it's caught by McGee. He will shoot a three. He will miss. A weak side rebound grabbed by Great Mason boxing. Gillis. Great job boxing out there, Mason. On that weak side, so many of those threes from the other side will come weak side. Mason's got a good box out there. Gillis dribbling to the right block, stopping. Now spinning, falling away from 15 feet and missing. Heidi had it, lost it. Now it's loose on the floor. Saved in bounds right in front of the Wisconsin bench. We have a stoppage of play. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, it's going to be a foul. A foul whistled against Wisconsin, and I think it's against Kamari McGee in the tussle. Timeout on the floor, 11.56 to go first half. Purdue 15. It is a foul, by the way, on McGee. 15 for Purdue, 14 for Wisconsin on the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Higher yield potential starts with the season-long systemic disease protection of Zyway brand fungicides from FMC. Zyway brand fungicides protect corn crops from key foliar diseases and support physiological benefits that help develop healthier, higher yielding corn for a difference you'll appreciate at harvest. Visit your FMC retailer for an at-plant advantage. Always read and follow all label directions. If your company is seeking to relocate or expand quickly, Hancock County, Indiana has a wide variety of business sites, including four shovel-ready certified silver business parks, plus higher-than-normal broadband capacity with an extensive fiber network with more than 2,000 miles of lines. Connecting opportunity with success. Contact the Hancock County Economic Development Council at www.hancockedc.com or at 317-477-7241. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Unity Healthcare, a trusted pillar in the community for more than 25 years, offers healthcare services that you can depend on. With a team of over 80 highly skilled providers, Unity Healthcare is committed to making the best decisions for your health right here in your local community. Visit one of our many healthcare specialists or urgent care to meet your specific healthcare needs. www.unityhc.com because we believe in working together towards a healthier future. Unity Healthcare, healthier together. Men's basketball postseason is sponsored by BW Fusion. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion. And goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. Find out how to build your most powerful gallon in ag today at mpga.ag. BW Fusion, proud presenting sponsor of Purdue men's basketball postseason. Purdue is one of four from the three-point line. Wisconsin's one for six. At the foul line with a one and one when we resume action, Camden Heidi. Camden, a Minnesota kid, played in this building as a junior in a state championship game. That's a high school junior. And here he is as a redshirt collegiate freshman with a one and one free throw line right. Camden from Wyzetta, Minnesota, wears 23 on the white uniform. Dribbles the ball twice, bends the knees, lets it fly, and misses. Rebounded, though, by Mason Gillis. Gillis came out for the weak side, left to right, and came up with a rebound. Purdue back to Camden Heidi with a lay-in. A beautiful.
beautiful dive from Smith and a beautiful uh, right-handed reverse layup for Heidi. How about a, that cut there by Cameron Heidi slicing through the lane left to right. Braden just drops off a beautiful pass that leads him beautifully to the other side of the rim where he can use his strong hands. Purdue leading 17-14, 11-32 to go in this first half. Glesman a catch and shoot three. It is long off of the weak side. A long rebound picked up by Ilver. Now to Store. Store will drive downhill, shoot a layup at the rim and miss. Heidi with a rebound for Purdue. Then hands off to Braden Smith. Heidi, some really nice moments. Rebound of the basketball, drawing fouls. Jumper good, left elbow, Braden Smith. He has five points. I'll tell you what, Camden's athleticism and his just overall toughness really fits in well with this Purdue team. Yeah, but that three spot, he gives you a lot of nice athleticism and size and toughness. Hard to bully him in the painted area because of his strength and toughness. Store will drive, get to the rim, blocked from behind by Miles Colvin. Out of bounds, baseline left, and Colvin then stares down A.J. Store as if to say, I may only be a freshman, but I am not scared. Well, there's some menacing stares, and I didn't feel like that one was super menacing. But yeah, Miles did take a little look in his direction after that sweet block from behind. What an assignment here, guarding the second team All-Big Tenor, A.J. Store, the freshman Miles Colvin. What a great matchup of athleticism there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Too. You're right on that. Store trying to size up Colvin, top of the key on a left-handed dribble. Now to Crowell on a pick and pop. Fakes the three. He's at the top of the key. To Hepburn, who will shoot a deep three and oh. make it. Oh, he was way out there. Chucky Hepburn with a triple. For a guy who struggled with his shot to the degree he has this year, really not shooting a good percentage from three, for him to hit that high degree of difficulty bomb from long range, that was impressive. Lawyers back in for Purdue, bouncing at top of the key to first. Now chest pass right wing, Colvin. He gives to Gillis. Gillis from 15 will pull the trigger and hit. Mason Gillis, his first scoring. Got some shot making going on. Yeah, all now, these guys right? are like, hey, Zach's not on the floor. Time for me to get a couple jumpers up. So big time pull up there from Mace. Purdue 21-17 over Wisconsin. Carter Gilmore to Klesmet left wing. Now in the corner, Store a three in the corner. Good. A.J. Store. He's made a couple of threes in this ball game. Purdue 21, Wisconsin 20 at the 9.45 mark. Yeah, that's Miles Colvin, just kind of a freshman mistake there. Gets a little too much space away from A.J. Store, allowing an easy catch and shoot. Braden Smith, left elbow extended, picks up the dribble, threw it out near the timeline. Miles Colvin grabbed it, kept it from going over the 10-second barrier. Gives it right back to Braden Smith. Shot clock at 7. Smith will pull from 3. No good. Prowl a rebound for Wisconsin. Badgers can take the lead with a field goal here. Up 21-20 are the Boilermakers. Lesman bouncing it, right block, extended, caught by Hepburn. Hepburn double team to Store. Store dribbles in for the left wing, goes strong, leaves it for a teammate, and it was stolen. Stolen by Fletcher Lawyer. Quickly ahead to Braden Smith. He's in some trouble. Kicks it left wing to Mason Gillis. Purdue now sets its offense. Caleb first, working against Crowell underneath the bucket. Kicks in the right corner for a Colvin three. It's long, rebounded A.J. Store of Wisconsin. Here come the Badgers right to left in their red uniforms. Purdue leading 21-20 at the 845 mark. Lesman, left elbow, not a crowd. In against first, reverse layup, good. And Wisconsin has a one-point lead. Really smart play there by Crowell, getting that pick and dive action there, the pocket pass. He's able to use the other side of the rim to create that separation from Caleb first. 8.25 to go first half. Purdue trailing by a digit. Gillis, left wing, a throw to Braden Smith, not a Colvin. Colvin from 18 feet will pull, missing long, rebounded by Wisconsin. Blue needs to set the defense. Hepburn pushing the tempo right to left, kicking a left corner. Store a catch and shoot three, good again. A.J. Store, he's made three three-point baskets, and it's Wisconsin 25, Purdue 21. And that's where transition defense can be so difficult. Colvin, with Carter Gilmore running the floor, has to pick him up. Well, Store's his man. Caleb first and hasn't recognized it in time, not able to get out there. At the other end, Braden Smith misses a three, rebounded, though, by Mason Gillis, then taken away from him by Chucky Hepburn, and then a foul goes against Purdue's Caleb First, trying to steal a Hepburn pass. Timeout on the floor. Badgers on an 11-6 run. They lead 25-21 over Purdue on the Central Indiana Honda Dealers scoreboard. 7.43 to go in the first. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. 
Higher yield potential starts with the season-long systemic disease protection of Zyway brand fungicides from FMC. Zyway brand fungicides protect corn crops from key foliar diseases and support physiological benefits that help develop healthier, higher yielding corn for a difference you'll appreciate at harvest. Visit your FMC retailer for an at-plant advantage. Always read and follow all label directions. You know you've got a comeback in you. When you take the next step, you're going to make it count for your career, for your family, for your life. You can earn a degree you're proud of with Purdue Global. Purdue Global is backed by Purdue University, one of the nation's most respected and innovative public universities. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This is your comeback. Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're good at insurance, but not just any insurance. We're good at... No, 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 no. Did you forget the parking brake? Yes, you forgot the parking brake. Insurance. When the forecast calls for cheese ball size hail insurance. Even shouldn't have parked under that tree. Insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Franciscan Health is proud to be the official medical provider for Purdue Athletics. Does a sudden sports injury have you on the bench? We can assist. Franciscan Health sports medicine specialists have mastered a team approach to sports injuries. You'll have access to a network of orthopedic professionals, rehabilitation services, and highly advanced technologies and treatments to get you back out on the field. To learn more, visit franciscanhealth.org slash sportsmedicine. This is Chase Martin, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. Purdue Athletics would like to thank and recognize members of the Black and Gold Club who support Purdue Athletics through their sponsorship at the highest level. Black and Gold Club members include Indiana Packers, Molson Coors, Purdue Federal Credit Union, Rohrman Automotive Group, Wabash, and Purdue Global. Each are great partners of Purdue Athletics. Rob Blackman, Bobby Riddell, courtside with engineer George Bowes, Wisconsin 25, Purdue 21. 7.43 to go in this first half of action. Badgers are 4 of 10 from 3. They've made their last three attempts. But, uh, Purdue is just 1 for 7. Uh, by the way, the Boilermakers are going to sub back into the game. Zach Eady. He had two fouls within the first two minutes of the game, went to the bench, and now he does return with 7.43 to go in the half. It's interesting how the uh, time and score of the game can uh, determine these decisions by coaches, right? Because you look over the Wisconsin side now, we see Tyler Wall is not coming into the game. He's still got a towel over his shoulder, uh, sitting on the bench, but that's because the Badgers are on a nice run. They, they don't have to maybe... Uh, push it a little bit and try to get their star forward in there uh, because of them having a four-point advantage at the moment, making uh, some outside shots. They made their last three threes, uh, whereas the Boilers, on the other hand, now down by four. Uh, we have an 8-0 run here going for the Badgers, and, and Purdue going to push it a little bit and get Zach back in there. Best news of all, Braden Smith has looked just fine today. Yes, that has been a huge sign of relief for the Purdue, and let's hope it stays there. Gilmore, left wing dribbling, dropping baseline to store. He drives in against Edie, kicks it right wing for a Kamari McGee three, and he misses. Rebounded by Fletcher Lawyer at the free throw line. Kamari McGee missing a three-point shot. Purdue with a possession here. Braden Smith, the point guard, dribbling on the center logo. Left wing chest pass to Lance Jones inside to Edie. Will Edie go one-on-one -on -one against Winter? Yes, he will. Kicks it out, however, for Braden Smith, who will drive, get to the rim, shoot a floater, and score. Braden Smith has seven points. That's a tough finish there by Braden. I get nervous now every time he drives, but that's a high-level finish in traffic. Purdue's down a deuce, 25-23. Badgers the ball in their red uniforms here. They have a nice crowd, as one would expect, traveling in from the state of Wisconsin. Here to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Three on the way for Klesman. Top of the key. Klesman pulls the trigger and nails it. Well, between Storr and Klesman, Purdue just allowing their good shooters. Too many clean looks here early in this first half, and uh, the Badgers making Purdue pay. Now 31 made threes in this tournament for Wisconsin. In two games plus, and a foul on Klesman guarding too closely against a driving Fletcher Lawyer coming in from the left wing. Two fouls on Klesman. 
Last we, year, he had 19 points in a game against Purdue. And that's what you want to see from Fletcher right there. If a guy's going to really get up there and try to uh, get up in your grill to avoid you from being able to make a pass, you got to have that ability to be able to rip and go, try to go by him and you know, make him pay for getting out there and overextending himself, and Fletcher's able to get the bump there and go to the line. This is a one-and-one one for Fletcher Lawyer, who does make the first foul shot. That's the first scoring of the game for Fletcher. Fletcher in that game Sunday against Wisconsin was really good. 15 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. 6.27 to go and a half. Lawyer will bend the knees, shoot the second foul shot, and make it. All right, let's get some stops here, Boilers. How about Wisconsin miss a three or two? Yeah. Or three or four. Boy, they've shot it well here in the tournament. It's 28-25, Badgers. 6.15 to go and a half. McGee, right wing, guarded by Lawyer. Top of the key to Gilmore. He'll pull the trigger. Carter Gilmore missing. Rebounded by Zach Eady of the Boilermakers. Gilmore on the year is now two of nine from three. Two of nine for the season. But I guess when the rest of your teammates are making them, you're like, hey, I'll give it a try. Maybe I'll make one. Lance Jones, left baseline, left it short. Had an open look, but it was short-armed. Rebounded by Carter Gilmore of Wisconsin. Quickly ahead to Macar uh, Kamari McGee, coming up the near sideline, right to left. Dribble handoff to A.J. Storr. Storr lowering the shoulder from the right elbow and shooting and hitting again. A.J. Storr, 11 points. He averages 16 and a half a game. 30 to 25, Wisconsin. Oh, crafty play and probably a little bit fortunate for Storr there. He drops the shoulder a little bit on Braden Smith. It really causes that separation. Official doesn't call it, and that allows him to hit that tough jumper there. Braden Smith into the free throw line area, bouncing it into Edie. It's a low pass. Now it's on the floor and will have a held ball. The ball was a little too low for Zach. He had to reach down around the ankles, and when he did that, Carter Gilmore diving on the floor. Held ball, possession arrow, favors Purdue with 12 on the shot clock. Yeah, Braden would like to have that pass back. And you throw those bounce passes to big guys, you got to make sure it has enough juice to get up to at least about knee level. Yeah. And that one was about mid-calf level. <laughs> yeah, at best. Which for Zach Eady is still very high. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but not for the common man. <laughs> 5.20 to go here in this first half. Braden Smith off a dribble handoff on the left wing. No. Edie with an offensive rebound, and he was fouled on that rebound attempt. This should be a one-and-one one for Zach Edie. That's team foul number nine. Foul on Winter. Nolan Winter. Second foul on a 6'11-inch freshman from Lakeville, Minnesota. 2023 Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Minnesota. Edie will let the first foul shot fly on a one and one and make it. Zach has scored four points. He had an and one to start the game. Then picked up two quick fouls. One a personal foul, one a technical. Well, Purdue just one of their last eight from the field. The free throw line, fortunately, keeping Purdue hanging in this one. That's now theirs. They got five made free throws. Yeah, he missed that one, but Trey kaufman Ren was then called on a foul for trying to get an offensive rebound. They say Trey pushing off. Two fouls on Trey kaufman Ren. Team foul number six on Purdue. That's a tough call there against Trey. Zach, unfortunately, not able to convert that second one. 30 to 26, Badgers the lead in the ball. Five mark first half. Chucky Hepburn to the right elbow. Finds Ilver. He'll pull the trigger and shoot another three and miss. Boy, guys, it really the Wisconsin, should, yeah, the Wisconsin shooting role threes. players are shooting a lot of bricks today. Uh, and here's a foul on an entry pass on Ilver. Purdue is throwing it into Trey Kaufman Wren. Ilver fouling. Between Gilmore, Ilver, and McGee, the three guys who shoot, you know, pretty low percentages and low volume for this Wisconsin team. I want to say 0 for 5 combined, maybe, from 3 between those three guys. Ilver is 28% from 3 this year. And he's just pulling the trigger like he's a 45% three-point He's taken at least five threes now against Purdue the last two games. And I'm going to be honest. Oh, he did. I'll take that back. As Trey does hit the first free throw, Ilver did end up hitting one late in that game in Mackey after the game was uh, already decided. So he's taken six threes against Purdue the last two games. He's one of six. But the five misses, all of them not close. Ethan Morton subbing in for Purdue. Six seven senior from Butler, Pennsylvania. Look at that. Trey Kaufman Ray made both foul shots. Trey is three of four at the line today. He is a 54% foul shooter. And Ethan Morton's going to guard Chucky Hepburn. Try to slow down the Badgers if we can. It's 30 to 28, Wisconsin at the 445 mark. 
Ilver, right wing, passes to Hepburn, further right wing. Snake dribbles his way to the right elbow, and now a foul on Morton. Yeah, Ethan Morton trying to work around the snake dribble. Kind of used his arm to leverage himself against Chucky Hepburn, and that is team foul number seven. So it's a one-and-one one for Chucky Hepburn and the Badgers. Ethan does, does get that left hand kind of over the top on the shoulder of Chucky Hepburn. I don't think he was doing a whole lot with it necessarily, but when it's just there, yeah. the official has a pretty clear view of it. Kind of hard not to make that call. Chucky Hepburn shooting the first foul shot, missing. It's a one and one. Boy, Purdue, Purdue got lucky. Purdue gets the rebound. Purdue didn't realize it was a one and one. Luckily, Braden Smith rebounded the ball. He was the only one paying attention. And here's a foul away from the ball on Kamari McGee. Fletcher Lawyer was setting a screen on the right wing, and McC Kamari McGee ran over Lawyer like a running back trying to run through a linebacker. Two foul shots coming for Fletcher Lawyer. The foul on McGee, his second. This has been a hard game to watch. Similar to Michigan State game yesterday because of the fouls and the starting and the stopping that we've had in this ball game. First foul shot, Lawyer, good. Fletcher has three points. Into the game, Caleb first. It's been very clunky, this ball game. No real rhythm to this point with four and a half to play in the half. Well, Hepper missing that front end, just a huge miss there, and then Purdue coming back on the other end as Fletcher sinks the second free throw. Purdue now nine made free throws, just one made free throw for the Badgers. Purdue making up for that three-point differential at the foul line. Game is tied at 30. Zach Eady comes out of the game. Caleb first back in. Camden Heidi back in the game. Purdue fans on their feet. Trying to implore their Boilermakers to hang tough here at a 30-30 bowl game. Feels like Wisconsin should be up about 10. But as you said, the foul shooting has kept Purdue in this game. Blackwell. Top of the key. Gives it to Crowd. Dribbles once to the left wing. Now to Hepburn. Hepburn to the free throw line. Tried to dribble in some traffic. Lost the ball and had to call timeout. Hepburn tried to dribble through three Boilermakers, lost his footing, fell down on the floor, and took a timeout to save possession. Timeout on the floor. Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard. We're tied at 30 at the 406 mark. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Purdue fans, say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. U.S. Foods and the Purdue Boilermakers. What a recipe for success. Like Purdue, we both stand for quality and value. From our state-of-the-art Indianapolis-based distribution center, we at U.S. Foods are committed to meeting our customers' needs by providing all your quality food service and equipment products throughout all of Indiana and Northern Kentucky. It's what we do to bring guests into your business every day that makes the difference. Enjoy the game and remember, U.S. Foods, the official food service supplier of Purdue Athletics. If you're a Boilermakers fan, you know that scoring big is everything. Few things feel as good as watching your team pass, shoot, and dribble their way to victory. Off the court, you can experience that same feeling with a Magnum tractor from Case IH. Magnum tractors match the power, speed, and strength of the best Boilermakers by helping you net every challenge that comes your way. Score big with a Magnum tractor this season by visiting your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash Boilermakers to learn more. Boiler up! At Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First, we do more than lend. We lift up our rural communities that we serve, too. From our day-to-day -day business of providing reliable credit to farmers and rural residents, to our community investment efforts and scholarships for college students, we help Indiana's rural communities find their next level. Visit FCMA.com to learn more about how we work with partners like Purdue University. Boiler up. Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First are equal opportunity lenders. The 23-24 Purdue basketball season is presented by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Earn a degree you're proud of and employers respect. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. We're tied at 30. 
4.06 to play in the first half. Purdue and Wisconsin, Big Ten Tournament semifinal action. Both teams are doing a good job of taking care of the basketball. Only three Wisconsin turnovers. Purdue only two miscues. Purdue just trying to piece it together with Zach Eady spending a lot of time on the bench here in the first half in foul trouble. Absolutely, and now Zach, it looks like, is going to be out of the game here for this little stretch, probably trying to get him maybe to the half with just the two fouls. We're seeing now Wisconsin here. Five seconds in the shot clock. Wisconsin's come out early out of the huddle, already kind of in their alignment. A.J. Store positioned right outside the charge arc. When you look at the time on the shot clock just being five seconds, we know Wisconsin's got a play where they like to lob the ball right up to A.J. Store around the rim. Would not be surprised if that's what they're going to here late clock. Carter Gilmore, who doesn't play a lot, has played a lot today in the first half. He's on the floor for Wisconsin. Averages, uh, he's only made two threes all year. Rarely shoots the ball. Gilmore has it. Dribble hand off to Hepburn. Shot clock at two. Now one. Store firing up a three at the horn. It's no good. Rebounded by Braden Smith. Then he lost it. Picked up by Store, and then he was fouled as he went to the rim. Oh, boy, that's just one of those. If Braden Smith could have caught it cleanly on the rebound, he would have been able to race up the other way, left to right, but he never quite had that ball in the midst. Now, granted, he was in traffic, and A.J. Store ended up with it and got fouled going to the rim. Yeah, it was actually a great play there by Carter Gilmore, or maybe a fortunate play on his end. Braden grabs it with one hand, gets his second hand on it, but right as he does, Gilmore pokes the left hand in as A.J. Store does miss the first free throw. Uh, Gilmore pokes that left hand and pokes it free, and of course the poke goes right to A.J. Store, <laughs> yes. who then is able to get fouled. Uh, the foul was on Braden Smith, his first. Back into the game right now is Zach Eady with two fouls, replacing Caleb first. Looks like Purdue's going to play offense for defense here late in the first half, as Store didn't make the second foul shot. 12 points for A.J. Store, second team all Big Ten performer this year, the transfer from St. John's. It's 31-30 Wisconsin at the 345 mark. Mason Gillis straight away. Three lets it fly. No good. Purdue struggling from that three-point line. Only one made three here in the first half. It's a pretty good look. Purdue's 13% from three. Remember, Purdue's the best three-point shooting team by percentage in the Big Ten. Have not shown it here in this first half. Gilmore, left baseline. Dribbles middle of the paint against Edie. Now dribbles way out to the right wing. They kick in the corner for Blackwell. Fakes the three, dribbles left baseline. Lowers the shoulder, knocks over Fletcher Lawyer, and that will be a Wisconsin turnover. Well, that's, you know, Fletch not known for his defense, but that possession there by him was big time. There was a switch with Braden Smith on Stephen Crowell. They're looking to try to go over the top. Braden's full fronting. Fletcher gets over there. On the, on the weak side, taking away that lob pass, but then they skip it. He does a great closeout, a long closeout to take away the three from Blackwell and then draw the charge. Just a really nice defensive play overall in that possession. Braden Smith over the timeline, left to right, bumped by Hepburn. Both teams wanted a foul. Neither got it. <laughs> Inside to Edie. Spinning, and he was fouled by Stephen Crowell as he spun to the bucket. I didn't see a whole lot there. Zach just kind of trying to get to his left shoulder. Two fouls on Crowell. Two-shot foul for Zach Eady. That's, that's a play on I agree. Me, you know. Plus, he would have dunked the ball. If it is a play on, that's what you wanted for Purdue. You would have had a two-handed dunk at the rim, uncontested. Instead, Eady has to shoot a foul shot and misses. So this turns out actually maybe a little bit better for the Badgers. Two fouls on Crowell, however. Lawyer out of the game, replaced by Ethan Morton. Right now, Purdue's playing offense for defense when they can with 3.03 to go in the half. Second foul shot on the way from Edie. No good. He missed them both. And now Coffin Wren cannot enter the fray for him defensively. One point lead for the Badgers. Less than three to go in this first half. Wisconsin attacking the basket to our left as we sit courtside. Carter Gilmore, chest pass, Hepburn. Now works his way left baseline, rises, fires, and scores. That was a big-time shot by Chucky Hepburn. A high-level shot there. Really maneuvering, weaving his way through traffic, and then fading on the left baseline. Braden Smith to the other end to Gillis. Top of the key. Throws it into Edie, and he was fouled on the entry pass. This one on Nolan Winter or Carter Gilmore. Both were standing there. It will be Winter. He now has three fouls. And again, back to the foul line will go Zach Edie with two foul shots. Zach yesterday missed three front ends of one-and-ones. 
very unlike Zach Eady, a good free throw shooter, 72% on the year. Ended up costing him by one point a chance to uh, get that fourth straight 30-point performance against the Spartans. And makes that foul shot, does Zach Eady. Five points for Zach on one made field goal. He made Purdue's first bucket of the game. Has not made a field goal since. Zach, the Big Ten Player of the Year, also a Big Ten All-Defensive Team. And he made both foul shots this time. He'll come out of the game. Trey kaufman Wren will replace him at the 231 mark. It's Wisconsin 33, Purdue 32. I think if you're Purdue, you're feeling pretty solid about where you're at, right? You're down one point. Zach's not been able to play a ton this half. I mean, Braden Smith looks good. I think overall you're, you're feeling pretty good about where things are at. It's going to end the half on a strong note. Hepburn left elbow feeds Gilmore, who dribble hands off to the right wing to Storr. Storr back to Hepburn. He dribbles out between the circles, between the leg dribble, right to left. Now works his way, left elbow extended, drives, gets to the rim, lost the ball on his way up, but was able to give it to his teammate on the right baseline. That's the new man into the game. Back to Storr, layup good. A.J. Storr, an acrobatic move in traffic to lay it in. How about the way he knifed through around two crew defenders, getting past Pop and Wren as the last line of defense, and then lays it off the window with the right hand. Wisconsin now playing with Chris Hodges. He is uh, playing for the first time today. Purdue turned it over. Trey Kaufman ran, had it in the post, tried to kick it out of the right corner to Ethan Morton, threw it a little too high. Out of bounds, boy, to make a turnover with 1.43 to go in the half. Wisconsin ball, Badgers lead 35-32. Hepburn, top of the key to Hodges. Dribbles once, gives to Storr. He gives it left side to Gilmore. Gilmore to Blackwell. Blackwell to Hodges. Hodges, top of the key, handoff to Hepburn. Hepburn dribbles in at 15 feet, stops, gives to Gilmore, kick in the corner. Blackwell, three on the way, in and out, no good. Boy, how did that ball not stay down for the freshman Blackwell? Rebounded by Purdue's Braden Smith. Timeout, Purdue, with 1.15 to go in the first half. Purdue, despite having to work around Zach Eady foul trouble, is trailing only 35-32 with 1.15 to go in this first half. You're good at being you, and Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance is good at your insurance. Find an agent to help you or get a quote today at infb.com. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Purdue taking the use it or lose it timeout here in half number one. Purdue is shooting 13% from the three-point line. That equates to one of eight. 12.5 to be exact. Yes, Purdue is only down 35-32, while the Badgers have hit five of 16 threes. The Badgers have really gone cold here from three after having a nice little run there. They were four for ten at one point. And so they're one for their last six from long range. But Purdue, no field goals in the last six minutes. Uh, just been a real struggle. They've fortunately been able to piece it together at the foul line to stay within arm's length. But uh, wouldn't mind a little triple time here. Well, we could use one of those. 115 to go. Purdue the ball. Front court now as we're back to action. Braden Smith dribbling between the circles. Left wing handoff to Lawyer. Top of the key. Catch Edie. Spins to face the basket. Gives back to Lawyer. Lawyer was fouled as he was trying to take the handoff from Blackwell. Blackwell had him uh, kind of held down by the left arm. More free throws to come for the Boilers. Two fouls on Blackwell. Two fouls on Blackwell. Two on Wall. Two on McGee. Two on Klesman. Two on Crow. Three on Winter. That's the Wisconsin foul trouble here in the first half. Free throw on the way is good for Fletcher Lawyer. Fletch has five points in the game. All five have come from the foul line. As now Caleb First subs in for defensive purposes to replace Zach Eady. You say, well, why do you sub out an all-Big Ten defensive player? Because he has two fouls. <laughs> Second foul shot good for Fletcher Lawyer. 35-34 Wisconsin with one minute remaining here in this first half. Hepburn dribbling high right elbow, stopping there, giving to Gilmore, catching, throwing left wing to Blackwell. Blackwell now giving up to Hodges. Right wing, it goes back to Hepburn, and he was fouled as he tried to dribble into the right elbow. Foul against Purdue's Braden Smith. He now has two fouls. Well, Braden Smith complaining. He felt like Chucky with his off arm was grabbing Braden, causing kind of the entanglement there, but 
unfortunately, you know, when two guys get tangled up, uh, the offensive player are going to get the benefit of the doubt more often than not. At the foul line will be Chucky Hepburn. I'm about to see the replay. Let's see if I can see anything here. Yeah, that could have gone either way. That's, true. That's probably one that... Uh, and when it's a 50-50 thing, they're going to get, yeah, the get the defense. Yeah, get the defense of it. Yeah, you're correct. I, had they called that on Hepburn, I could see it. But called on Braden Smith, I could see that too. Hepburn's first foul shot, good. Six points for Hepburn, averaging 8.5 a game. Big Ten honorable mention performer this year. Did not play yesterday against Northwestern. He's playing here today. Missed the second foul shot. Lawyer rebounded. 36-34 Wisconsin. 45 seconds remaining here in the half. Clock ticking. Purdue left to right in their white uniforms here. Purdue's going to run a set play. Down screening. Trey Kaufman ran for Gillis. He catches top of the key. Throws to Trey Kaufman ran on the right elbow. Now to Braden Smith. Cross key pass to Trey Kaufman ran Spinning against Hodges and lays it in. He put him in the blender and rolled his way to the bucket. Just high-level footwork there by Trey Kaufman Wren. We know he wants to get to that left shoulder. The defender not able to resist him and stop him from doing so. TKR off the window. Tie ball game. Tied at 36. Wisconsin holding for the final shot. We're at nine seconds. That bird off the screen from Hodges. Top of the key to the left wing is stopping. To Gilmore. Gilmore to Store. Deep three. Right wing on the way. is no good. And Purdue and Wisconsin are all squared 36. East, we go to the halftime locker room. 36 for Purdue. 36 for Wisconsin. Big 10 tournament semifinal action. We will take a break after we pause for 10 seconds. We're near the top of the hour, so let's pause. 10 seconds for station identification. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Purdue makes only one three-point shot in the first half. Zach Eady plays very rarely because of early foul trouble, yet the Boilermakers are all square with Wisconsin, 36 apiece as we have reached halftime. The Coors Light Halftime Report begins after this. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. University Bookstore is the official textbook source for Purdue Athletics and the home of the original Purdue Pete. Cash in on three-point Thursdays with Purdue men's and women's basketball. When Purdue scores, so do you. With winning home games, you can save up to 39% on in-store purchases. Gear up for game days with the number one fun place for Purdue. University Bookstore, two locations, State Street, and across from Mackey Arena. It's University Bookstore. This is Mason Gillis, Purdue men's basketball. For my friends at the Haldeman Companies, proud supporters of Purdue University. They use the same principles for success that Coach Panner teaches us. The importance of teamwork, execution, and tremendous effort are keys to success. Their team includes farm managers, appraisers, and real estate brokers with the experience, knowledge, and professionalism to help you accomplish your farm goals. Since 1930, if it has anything to do with the business of farming, Haldeman can help. Visit Halderman.com to learn more. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. We Boilermakers show our pride in a number of ways. From a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with the Purdue Federal Visa Signature Card, you have one more way to show your pride. Purdue Federal, the official credit card for Purdue fans everywhere. Federally insured by NCUA. On the Purdue Global Sports Network, from Learfield. 
Boilermaker Basketball is brought to you by Coors Light, made to chill. Proud sponsor of the Purdue Boilermakers. Also brought to you by Case IH. Take your success off the court and out into the field with Case IH's superior farming tools. Visit your local Case IH dealer or learn more at caseih.com slash boilermakers. And by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Purdue Boilermaker Basketball is on the air. This is the Boilermaker Halftime Show. Time now for a Coors Light Halftime Report. Coors Light Mountain Cold Refreshment made to chill. Proud partner of the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue and Wisconsin all knotted up at 36 apiece through the first 20 minutes. Rob Blackman here with Bobby Buckets Riddell. Talking about Purdue feeling fortunate going into the locker room, Bob, knowing Zach Eady played only seven minutes because of foul trouble, knowing Purdue made only one of eight threes. I think Wisconsin has the same argument. Tyler Wall only played three minutes. They played 11 different guys, so they certainly had a lot of different group, group groupings of five that I'm certain they haven't had on the floor together much this season. They probably don't feel too badly either being tied at 36. I think both coaches are like, you know what? We're probably pretty fortunate where we're at right now. Uh, that's a good point because neither team really shooting the ball very well overall. Uh, 43% for the Badgers, 44% for Purdue. So not great field goal shooting. And then from three-point range, both teams really struggling. Uh, Purdue, of course, one for eight. It's the worst. But, yeah, when you don't have your star players out there for very many minutes, you're really worried that you might have a – differential that you're not going to be able to overcome but of course at this point neither team uh, has any def differential to worry about here's a stat that has me confused 17 three-point shots for wisconsin 15 two-point shots what we have seen all season long when Edie's out of the game the other team attacks the basket they try to get points in paint Wisconsin did exactly the opposite in the first 20 minutes. They kept shooting threes. That is so well said there by you, Robin. A great observation because that is a really big missed opportunity for the Wisconsin Badgers. And it came back to that point we were talking about with the role players and the missed threes. Uh, early in the game, Tyler Wall, even when Zach Eadie's out there, settles for two threes, misses them both. Uh, John Blackwell, 0 for 1 from 3. You know, but he's a capable three-point shooter, but still could have maybe attack the rim. Kamari McGee, 0 for 2. Marcus Ilver, 0 for 2. Carter Gilmore, 0 for 1. All these guys are low percentage three-point shooters. Zach Eady's not on the floor, and they're taking threes and missing them. Uh, just, you know, probably not good decisions, right? You got to have good decisions, good shot selection. And they did not attack the rim when they easily could have got to the foul line or finished without Zach Eady and his imposing rim protector. We're tied at 36. More of the Coors Light Halftime Report when we come back, including the halftime statistics presented by Ruoff Home Mortgage. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Unity Healthcare, a trusted pillar in the community for more than 25 years, offers healthcare services that you can depend on. With a team of over 80 highly skilled providers, Unity Healthcare is committed to making the best decisions for your health right here in your local community. Visit one of our many healthcare specialists or urgent care to meet your specific healthcare needs. www.unityhc.com because we believe in working together towards a healthier future. Unity Healthcare, healthier together. Water damage from a busted pipe can be a real nightmare in these frigid temps. For over 40 years, Hayes & Sons has been restoring water damage in Indiana homes and businesses. They'll help you navigate your insurance claim and get your life back on track. So, when a water disaster strikes, tell your insurance agent you want Hayes & Sons for your restoration work. Visit HayesAndSons.com for more information. Domino's Mix and Match menu has items for every occasion. Flaked on your friend's open mic night? Flaky bread twists and molten lava cake should do the trick. Soccer team duty? Medium two-topping pizzas and stuffed cheesy bread are your best defense. Is it your dog's half birthday? <laughs> Celebrate his biggest day with savory sandwiches and tender specialty chicken. Mix and match two or more items for $6.99 each at Domino's. Ask for this offer two item minimum prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Bone and wings, red bull pasta, and pan pizza will cost extra. Local stores have delivery fees and can charge extra for some menu items. Keystone Cooperative is centered on delivering the farmer-owned cooperative of the future. 
Starting today, we're proud to be owned and operated by over 20,000 member owners. Keystone specializes in energy, home heat, agronomy, grain, animal nutrition, and swine production. And we remain centered on the valued relationships that have built and grown the cooperative for 100 years. Just like you, we're proud to back the boilers. Keystone Cooperative, centered on you. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Purdue University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. It's Purdue 36, Wisconsin 36. Let's look at the halftime stats presented by Ruoff Mortgage. Ruoff Mortgage, proud supporter of Purdue basketball. Ruoff's top-notch customer service makes your home ownership dreams an easy reality. Apply online at Ruoff.com. Wisconsin 14 of 32 shooting, 43.8%. 5 of 17 from 3, 29%. 3 of 6 at the foul line. They're led in scoring are the Badgers by A.J. Storrs, 14 points. 18 rebounds for the Badgers, 4 turnovers. Purdue, 19 rebounds, 3 turnovers. Boilermakers, 11 of 25, shooting 44%. Just 1 of 8 from the 3-point line, 12.5%. But Purdue, 13 of 18 at the foul line, 72.2%. Purdue's leading scorer, Trey Kaufman-Wren, he has 9 first-half points. Coors Light, Mountain Cold Refreshment Made to Chill, official partner of Purdue Athletics. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. Bobby Riddell has a look at the out-of-town scoreboard presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. When we come back to the Coors Light Halftime Report, this is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hancock County, Indiana, located just 15 minutes from downtown Indianapolis near I-70 and I-465, is open for business. Learn why we are one of the fastest growing communities in Indiana. With access to available land, infrastructure, transportation, and a regional airport, join other national brands like Amazon, Carvana, and Walmart, and discover why we are the best-kept secret in central Indiana. This message brought to you by the Hancock County Economic Development Council. Visit us at HancockEDC.com or at 317-477-7241. If you're a Boilermakers fan, you know that scoring big is everything. Few things feel as good as watching your team pass, shoot, and dribble their way to victory. Off the court, you can experience that same feeling with a Magnum tractor from Case IH. Magnum tractors match the power, speed, and strength of the best Boilermakers by helping you net every challenge that comes your way. Score big with a Magnum tractor this season by visiting your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash Boilermakers to learn more. Boiler up! At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're good at insurance, but not just any insurance. We're good at fireworks don't go in the attic insurance, hole in window insurance, even guy that shouldn't have a chainsaw but has a chainsaw insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Check out Honda certified pre-owned vehicles. They are like new and only available at your local Honda dealer. Checked, inspected, and reconditioned with genuine Honda parts by factory trained technicians. Honda certified it. And backed it with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Certified pre-owned Hondas are in stock now at your local Honda dealer. Drive worry-free with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Honda certified it. Only when you buy at your local Honda dealer. Here to the halftime show, where Purdue leads the Wisconsin Badgers 36 to 36. Or excuse me, Purdue's tied with the Wisconsin Badgers 36 to 36 at the half. Here in the first semifinal of Big Ten tournament action, today's out of town scores are brought to you by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. Let's take a look at some of the top 25 action being played here across the country in conference tournament action. One game currently underway besides this Purdue Wisconsin matchup, and that is in the SEC tournament, a semifinal game being played on ESPN and at the half Mississippi State and 12th ranked Auburn are tied 31 to 31 
over in Big 12 championship action. It's the final today, and first-ranked Houston is going to take on seventh-ranked Iowa State. That game will tip at 6 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Over in the ACC tournament, it's the final today as well. At 8.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN, we have the North Carolina State Wolfpack taking on fourth-ranked North Carolina. The second Big Ten tournament semifinal game will be 13th-ranked Illinois against Nebraska. That is the two-seed versus the three-seed. That game will tip following this Purdue-Wisconsin matchup around 3.30 Eastern time on CBS. And then 10th-ranked Marquette will take on second-ranked UConn in the Big East tournament final. That game will tip at 6.30 p.m. on Fox. Then lastly, we have one ticket that was punched today over in the America East Conference Championship game. Vermont defeated UMass Lowell 66-61. Drive the road to win with Honda and have fun off the court with the most fun-to-drive vehicles. Central Indiana Honda dealers are proud supporters of Purdue Athletics. We'll take a look at the keys to the second half in just a moment. When we return to the Coors Light Halftime Report, this is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. You work hard. And at First Farmers Bank and Trust, we work hard for you. Since 1885, we've committed to helping families, businesses, and communities thrive financially. From home to the office, to the field, to the arena. We value hard work and perseverance as much as you do. Experience banking built on heart and grit today. Learn more at ffbt.com. First Farmers is a proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. This is Mason Gillis, Purdue men's basketball. For my friends at the Haldeman Companies, proud supporters of Purdue University. They use the same principles for success that Coach Panner teaches us. The importance of teamwork, execution, and tremendous effort are keys to success. Their team includes farm managers, appraisers, and real estate brokers with the experience, knowledge, and professionalism to help you accomplish your farm goals. Since 1930, if it has anything to do with the business of farming, Haldeman can help. Visit Halderman.com to learn more. Franciscan Health is proud to be the official medical provider for Purdue Athletics. Does a sudden sports injury have you on the bench? We can assist. Franciscan Health sports medicine specialists have mastered a team approach to sports injuries. You'll have access to a network of orthopedic professionals, rehabilitation services, and highly advanced technologies and treatments to get you back out on the field. To learn more, visit franciscanhealth.org slash sportsmedicine. This is your moment, your time to shine, your comeback. You're ready for the next step in your career, and you want an education employer's respect. So you're not just going back to school. You're coming back with Purdue Global. Backed by Purdue University, one of the nation's most respected public universities, Purdue Global is built for people who bring their life experience into the online classroom. Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Wisconsin, the Big Ten champs in 2022. Purdue, the Big Ten champs in 2023 and 2024. Two heavyweights in the Big Ten going head-to-head -head today. Tied at 36 as we open up the second half of action. The winner advances on to tomorrow's Big Ten tournament championship game. Purdue is 0 for 2 all time against Wisconsin in the Big Ten Tournament. Doesn't that sound weird to you? These two teams have only played twice ever in the history of the Big Ten Tournament. Yeah, think about that. These teams only played twice. Purdue and Indiana have only played once ever, and that was in the first ever Big Ten Tournament. So crazy. Wisconsin, the ball as we open the second half of action. Hepburn lobs into Wall. Back out to Hepburn right wing. Shot clock at 15. Back to Wall. Wall. Foul on Braden Smith, I think, trying to guard in the post. If so, that's his third. So now Braden Smith has some foul trouble. Three fouls on Braden Smith. Zach Eady, two fouls, and Wisconsin inbounds baseline right. Wisconsin in red, Purdue in white. Badgers attacking the basket to our right here in the second half. Hepburn trying to back down Braden Smith, leaning in, giving it up to Wall. Wall out high to Store. Store, the 35-footer air ball. Shot clock was at 7. Not like he had to shoot it there. And he just cut it loose, and it was an air ball. Coming out of the game, Braden Smith with those three fouls, replaced here by the freshman Miles Colvin. Colvin first off the bench in the second half. 
Uh, definitely a settler, I think. You're right. It's getting close there toward the end of the shot clock, but he has enough time to put the ball on the floor oh, as yeah. athletic as he is and, and create a better shot than that, especially after he hesitated on the catch. He had 14 in the first half at A.J. Storm. He's the game's leading scorer. Purdue now, first possession of half number two. Lance Jones throws it down inside, caught on the right block by Edie. Here's the double team. Skip it to Lawyer in the left corner. Now to Colvin. He'll shoot a three. Triple time. Miles Colvin. Thank you, baby. Oh, isn't it funny? I was watching Miles in warm-ups here before the second half, and he wasn't making a shot. He couldn't buy one. Sure enough, his first look here as he subs in the game, it's pure. Purdue up 39-36. Badgers with the ball. Left wing chest pass, Chucky Hepburn. Snake dribble to the free throw line, floater good. Boy, Chucky's so good at snake dribbling his way through traffic and setting himself up for this short little floater. Chucky Hepburn has eight points. 39-38 Purdue. Tyler Wall ran into Lance Jones. No foul was called. Lance lost it out of bounds. Purdue turnover. Lance is not arguing, so I'll assume... That it was not a foul because Lance does not seem too displeased with anyone except himself. It definitely looked like an excessive reach there, but I guess he didn't draw contact. Badgers the ball. Purdue a one-point lead. 18-20 to go in the game. Klesman to Crowd. Baseline jumper good. And now Wisconsin has the lead. Pretty good two-man game there on that left side between Klesman and Crowell. Klesman comes off that thing. Crowell spaces to that left baseline about 15 feet away and drops in a nice jumper off the bounce pass. Badgers up 40 to 39. Lawyer right wing, bobbled it, got it back. Throws to Trey Kaufman, in top of the key, now to Lance Jones. He'll shoot from 18 feet and hit it from the right elbow position. Lance Jones has made some pretty impressive-looking pull-ups today. That one, nothing but net there off the dribble handoff from Kaufman Wren going to his right. Six for Lance Jones. Purdue up 41-40, 17-30 remaining. Crowell, left wing, feet on the arc. Now swings it high side to Wall. Gives to Hepburn. Hepburn using a screen from Wall at the right elbow. Hepburn back to Wall, left block. He'll attack Edie by stepping into him, shooting a hook shot block. Blocked by Edie. Wall thought he could kind of spin away from him, and Zach Edie had a different idea. Blue of the ball here. Edie has it near the center circle. Gives to Lawyer, poked away from Lawyer. Saving it quickly, though, to Lance Jones before it went into the backcourt. Little Superman there on the save. Jones on the left wing. Boy, Wisconsin really guarding here in the second half. Lance hanging, firing in the middle of the paint. He hung in the air forever and then knocked in the short jumper. Lance showing off the hang time ability and then double clutches and gets that thing to drop in over the front of the rim. Do up 43-40. Store rip and go on the left baseline, fouled by Miles Colvin. First foul on Miles. That is that ability out of Lance Jones, though. Just that element you didn't quite have last year. That other guy who can, hey, it's one-on-one snare on the wing. I can rip and go. I can beat you. I can get into the paint, create some separation. And obviously that's a tough shot, and you'd like to see that go down. But he's just got that ability to create for himself or others using the dribble against a difficult defense. Ethan Morton subbing in. Max Klesbitt shooting a three and hitting it from the right wing. Max Klesbitt knocks in a triple. His second made three of the game. We're tied at 43. Uh, uh, Morton, by the way, subbed in for Miles Colvin here. Lance Jones to Edie, top of the key. Dribbling once, hands off to Lawyer. Lawyer coming down the right side of the paint. Kicking the corner for a three for Trey Kaufman. Wren, no. Long rebound, Klesman. Stolen from him for a moment. Now loose on the floor and now a foul. Lance Jones tried to jump back on top of the ball and in doing so fell on top of Klesman. Foul on Lance Jones, his first. Lance almost did such a good job of stealing that little rebound there from Klesman using the quick hands. He poked it free. But Klesman a little bit quicker to the floor. And unfortunately, Lance then, as he tried to a little bit overreact there, jumps over the top and lands directly on his back. Yeah, that was a foul. It didn't look like a fun little uh, situation for Klesman there. We are 16-13 remaining in the game. We're all snug at 43. Purdue in Wisconsin. Hepburn dribbling right elbow. Now crossing to the left side of the paint. Giving to Wall, who attacked from the right block. Goes right at Edie. He's underneath the bucket. Kick it out to Crowell. Crowell, left side. Now giving to Klesman. He'll dribble right baseline. Back to Crowell. Shot clock at seven. Now to Hepburn off the screen from Crowell on the right elbow. Kicks in the corner. A Tyler Wall three is short. Rebounded Lance Jones. He wants to run. Purdue has a three on two right to left. Lance will attack the basket. Kick to Braden Smith right wing. He'll dribble it into 14 feet. Bounce it into Trey Kaufman-Wren. Low pass. 
Loose on the floor. Held ball. Possession arrow favors Purdue. Timeout on the floor. 15-33 to play. Purdue 43. Wisconsin 43. On the Central Indiana Honda dealer scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Keystone Cooperative is centered on delivering the farmer-owned cooperative of the future. Starting today, we're proud to be owned and operated by over 20,000 member owners. Keystone specializes in energy, home heat, agronomy, grain, animal nutrition, and swine production. And we remain centered on the valued relationships that have built and grown the cooperative for 100 years. Just like you, we're proud to back the boilers. Keystone Cooperative, centered on you. We Boilermakers show our pride in a number of ways. From a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with the Purdue Federal Visa Signature Card, you have one more way to show your pride. Purdue Federal, the official credit card for Purdue fans everywhere. Federally insured by NCUA. I get paid to do this. How cool is this? Wow. It's like <laughs> me getting paid to be a coach. And for me, I don't think there's a place out there better for me than Purdue University. Hi, I'm Kate Young, host of This is Purdue, the official podcast of Purdue University. Over the last three years, my conversations with Boilermakers have been serious, informative, and in the case of that exchange with former Purdue basketball coach Gene Cady and current head coach Matt Painter, downright fun. Be sure to follow This is Purdue on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Honda drivers. If you want to keep your Honda a Honda, only service your Honda with the experts at your local Honda dealer. They use genuine Honda parts and factory certified technicians to service all Hondas. Keeping your Honda a Honda. Don't trust your investment to anyone else. Only service with genuine Honda parts and factory certified technicians to make sure your Honda stays 100% Honda. When you need service for your Honda, search your local Honda dealer. This is Vince Edwards, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. Purdue men's basketball postseason, sponsored by BW Fusion. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion, and goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. Find out how to build your most powerful gallon in ag today at mpga.ag. BW Fusion, proud presenting sponsor of Purdue men's basketball postseason. One number to keep an eye on. Wisconsin this year is 17-0 when the opponent scores 70 or less. Right now we're tied at 43 with 15-33 to go in the game. I have a hard time believing either team is going to get to 70. Something's got to get. Something's got to get. <laughs> Purdue plays with Lawyer and Mason Gillis. Also on the floor, Zach Eady, Lance Jones, and Braden Smith. Purdue inbounds, baseline left, 18 on the shot clock. Boilermaker ball here in their white unis. Braden Smith on the right wing with the ball. The lawyer to the right elbow. He'll shoot from 18. It's no good long. Gillis rebounds. Now to Braden Smith. Right inside it goes to Eady. Eady on crowd. Spins. Got the basket. And Big Z with a little... Look right at Stephen Crowell. Those two had a lot of jawing with the technical earlier in the game. And Crowell, or Big Z, loves that little and one over the top. Boy, the the at, uh, at the line for an and one. Purdue's degree plus gives students the chance to earn a Bachelor of Science and one from the College of Liberal Arts, both in four years. Uh, Check out the Liberal Arts Degree Plus. See if and one is right for you. It's not right for Zach Eady. He missed the free throw. A.J. Store down the left side of the lane. Layup good. He just lowered the shoulder, driving down the left side of the paint and makes a layup. And that's all A.J. Store right there, just being able to use that burst to create the angle on the left side of the rim, and he finishes with the right hand. We are tied at 45 at the 15-minute mark. A.J. Store has 16 points inside the 80. Dribbled, lost it, loose on the floor. Picked up by Wall and the Badgers. Wisconsin running right to left. Klesman, high right wing, guarded here by Lawyer. Now top of the key, Crow. He'll swing it to the further left wing, caught by Hepburn. Hepburn dribbling in at 15 feet, stopping. Throws it into Crowell and it's poked away. Stolen for a moment. Now back to Crowell. Who dunks? Purdue got an unfortunate bounce there. They had knocked the ball away, but it ended up right back in the hands of Stephen Crowell for an uncontested two-handed dunk. 
Tyler Mason just fumbles that away, unfortunately, as the ball got loose. Lance had great hands to poke it away. Into Edie, spinning with a right-handed hook and missing on Crowell. Crowell with 11 points and a defensive stop there on Zach Edie. Wisconsin up 47-45. Crowell at the top of the key, dribbles once, hands off to A.J. Store. Store from 15 feet, firing and missing. Rebounded by Purdue's Zach Edie. Zach has eight points, six rebounds. We're at the 14-minute mark of this game. Here's Braden Smith at the free throw line. Bounding it, bouncing it inside to Edie, who spins and scores with a right-handed bank shot. Just great deep position there by Zach. He's so good at doing that in the half-court setting. And Stephen Crowell really tough to stop that once Zach gets that deep. Now 84 straight double-figure scoring games for Zach Edie. Crowell attacking Edie, having it knocked out of bounds. Last touched by, uh, by uh, Tyler Wall. Yes, yes it is. Yeah, Zach knocked it off his face. Crowell tried to be really sneaky there and do a rip-through move and get his arms tangled with Zach. I really like the no-call. I understand why Badger fans would feel like the arms get tangled. There should be a foul, but he completely initiates the contact by trying to rip his arms up through Zach, who's in legal guarding position. I like the no-call there. 13.33 to go in the game. We're tied at 47. Full court pressure for the Badgers. Fletcher Lawyer to Mason Gillis, now to Braden Smith, who will finally bring it up over the 10-second barrier. 47-47 the score. Closely played as both of these two teams played in the first two games of the year. Closely played contest. Media right-handed hook shot scoring this time over Winter. Purdue's up 49-47. Timeout for a moment. Marcus Ilver of the Badgers lost his right sneaker. Purdue going back to the well time and time again. Z's got that look in his eyes too where he's feeling good about himself. And Wisconsin, you know, if I'm them post-defense-wise, I'm at least trying to make Zach go the other way. You know, he's feeling really comfortable going over the left shoulder with the right hand. It's three straight buckets now that way. I thought for sure right there they would really try to sit heavy on his left shoulder and make him go the other way. They do not, and Zach sure enough scores with the jump hook. Purdue by two, 13.05 to go. Kamari McGee with the ball for Wisconsin. To Winter, left-handed handoff on the left wing to Klesman. Now to Ilver. He'll shoot a three. Left wing miss again. Boy, Marcus Ilver. It's not normally my uh, my cup of tea to criticize the other team and their decision making, but I'm not sure why Hilbert keeps taking three point shots here. A lot for Edie from Braden Smith, stolen away down low, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Edie. Excellent defense in the interior by the Badgers to knock that ball away from Zach Edie. And Zach points to the bench and tells Coach Painter, "That's my bad. I got to keep the ball high after Braden threw that little lob pass." You know, normally Zach's able to keep it high and go straight back up. He dropped it down and let McGee get a piece of it. Ilver right side, swinging it further right to Klesman. Klesman in the right elbow, a step back, long jumper is no good. Rebounded by the freshman Camden Heidi. Purdue 49, Wisconsin 47, 12, 25 remaining. The clock ticking here in Minneapolis. The winner plays in the Big Ten title game tomorrow. Inside of Edie on the left block. Working strong against Winters. Spinning and shooting. Are they going to count the basket or say before the shot? Basket no good. Before the shot, foul on Winter. Four fouls on Nolan Winter. That felt like, honestly, another play that you probably could just let it be a play on. It certainly would have been great for Purdue if they did because Zach was able to make that right hook. But surprising by Winter again. Winter just allowing... I guess he didn't allow since he fouled, but uh, was called for the foul. Zach to get to that left shoulder right in the middle of the lane. Purdue inbounding baseline left. 12-15 remains in this game. Coming up next, Nebraska and Illinois. Braden Smith will drive. Shoot a floater. That is long. No good. Rebound of Kamari McGee. He was about eight feet away was Braden. Just put a little too much hot sauce on that one and left it long. Kamari McGee, right side, Ilver, swinging it further right to A.J. Store. He'll rip and go baseline, attacking and missing from the right block. Can't believe he missed it. Mason Gillis rebounded for Purdue. Less than 12 to go in the game. Lance Jones from 18 feet straight away. It is no good. Rebounded Ilver of Wisconsin. Good look for Lance. Just couldn't get it to go. Here come the Badgers. Left to right in their red uniforms. Throwing it to Crowell on the right baseline. Wearing his red t-shirt underneath the red jersey. Crowell dribbling. Dribbling. Now picking up finding Store. Also wears a red t-shirt. Store on the right wing. Sizing up Gillis. Now driving at the rim. Kicking in the left wing. Caught by Blackwell. His three on the way. Short. Rebounded Ilver. Back to Blackwell. He attacks the bucket. He missed an easy bunny. Rebounded by Zach Eady. That may have been the Zach Eady effect there. 
because it should have been an easy layup. But easy, Edie was kind of lurking, and I think Blackwell knew it. Inside to Edie, spinning, shooting. He'll be called for traveling. 11 minutes to go. Timeout on the floor. Blue 49, Wisconsin 47 on the Central Indiana Honda dealer scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Talking on the phone is difficult if you've been exposed to loud noises over time. Combat veterans, factory workers, farmers, gun and motorcycle enthusiasts can have trouble hearing on the telephone. Relay Indiana helps return clarity to your phone conversations. Relay Indiana also provides free loaned equipment to those who qualify. Get the CapTel Caption Telephone from Relay Indiana. Visit RelayIndiana.com now. Water damage from a busted pipe can be a real nightmare in these frigid temps. For over 40 years, Hayes & Sons has been restoring water damage in Indiana homes and businesses. They'll help you navigate your insurance claim and get your life back on track. So, when a water disaster strikes, tell your insurance agent you want Hayes & Sons for your restoration work. Visit HayesAndSons.com for more information. Family owned, women owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Charters of all sizes anywhere in the continental USA. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Just sit back and let us drive. There's no need to compromise your ride to relaxation. Lafayette Limo. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're good at insurance, but not just any insurance. We're good at... No, 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 no! Did you forget the parking brake? Yes, you forgot the parking brake. Insurance. When the forecast calls for cheese ball size hail insurance! Even shouldn't have parked under that tree. Insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Hey, for all you golfers out there, the Ackerman Allen course at Burke Boilermaker Complex is open today. It's opening day. Come out and enjoy an early spring round. 2024 memberships are still available. Book your tee time or join today at PurdueGolf.com. Boilermakers 49, Wisconsin 47. 11 minutes remaining in the game. Zach Eady has scored 12 points in this game, meaning he has tied Rick Mount for the most points scored in the history of Purdue basketball, 2,323 points. On the next point scored by Zach Eady, he will become the all-time leader. For now, Zach is on the bench getting a rest, replaced by Caleb First. Purdue plays with Gillis and Smith. First, Heidi and Lance Jones. Boilermakers and Badgers were tied, 36 apiece at the halftime horn. Badgers the ball left and right here, under 11 minutes remaining. That burned the wall, chest pass, left wing store, went right through his hand, stolen by Lance Jones, and then Lance took a timeout. That ball just went right through the hands of A.J. Storr, and then he fouled him. I thought it was a timeout, no store fouled. Boy, that's a big foul there. The ball, a big turnover, really not so much of a foul, but... That ball, just, he just didn't look it in. Like a wide receiver, doesn't look the ball into his hands. And Lance Jones said, thank you very much. That's just a lack of concentration there. And a yeah, third team foul there for the Badgers. Top of the key first. Only the first foul on the store, by the way. Here's Caleb first giving to Braden Smith at the right elbow. He will shoot a jumper that's no good. Rebounded by Camden Heidi for a moment. Then it knocked out of his hands and grabbed by Max Klesman. 10-22 remaining. The winner to play in the championship tomorrow. Lesman down low to Wall. Wall skip pass left wing. Clepburn. Hepburn will drive. Lead for Wall. He'll lay up and miss a bunny at the rim. How did he miss it? Unbelievable. He was uncontested and missed the shot. Rebounded Mason Gillis and then stolen back by Wall. Right back to the Badgers. Hepburn on the right wing. Dribbling right elbow. Shooting a floater. He missed it. Rebounded Mason Gillis. Now, this game has gotten a little ugly here both ways over the last 30 seconds or so. 
bad passes, missed shots, easy shots. The Badgers really going to be kicking themselves later in this game if they're not able to prevail with some of the missed bunnies they've had. What the makers here, white unis, and a two-point lead at the 9.30 mark. Big Ten tournament action in the Twin Cities. Braden Smith, floater on the left wing, tough shot, no good, and the shot clock expired. It was an air ball as the shot clock was expiring, and that'll give the ball right back to Wisconsin. Subbing in, Miles Colvin to replace Braden Smith. Colvin will guard A.J. Store. And Purdue just trying to hold on here with Zach Eady getting some rest. Braden Smith now subbing out of the game. Purdue just 20% from the three-point line. Klesman speaking of threes. Left wing is missed. Rebounded Caleb first. Remember, Purdue, second-best three-point shooting team in the country by percentage. It's right now at 20% from three. Having a tough time making them here today. This ball knocked into the backboard, grabbed by Miles Colvin. They say it was, uh, was it deflected by a defender? Yes, no, yes, no, yes. <laughs> no. No. It okay, it's and over it, back. And Miles did a very poor job, unfortunately, of being an actor because he knew it was off him, but the official did not. Yeah. And Miles did the old, like, act like, oh, uh, he assumes the whistle's going to come as yeah. soon as he picks up the ball, and so he went all nonchalant. Over the whistle back. did not come. Yeah, over and back violation. Purdue now three turnovers in a row. But yet still a two-point lead. 8.45 remaining. Hepburn right elbow. Dribbling in, leaving it down low for Wall. This time he does not miss. A close-in shot. Tyler Wall ties the game. Nice two-man game there on the pocket pass. But back, going back to that Miles Colvin play, I'm not sure for sure I've seen an official miss the call, but then change his call based on how the person reacted. That's why I was delayed. I was waiting on a call from the official, and it was delayed. Oh, a turnover stolen by Hepburn. A run out and a dunk, and the Badgers lead by two. Timeout, Purdue. 51-49, Wisconsin the lead. Four straight turnovers for Purdue. Hepburn this time on a run out and a dunk. 8.21 to go in the game on the Central Indiana Honda dealer scoreboard. Wisconsin 51, Purdue 49. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. You know you've got a comeback in you. When you take the next step, you're going to make it count for your career, for your family, for your life. You can earn a degree you're proud of with Purdue Global. Purdue Global is backed by Purdue University, one of the nation's most respected and innovative public universities. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This is your comeback. Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Hey, Purdue fans. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. Franciscan Health is proud to be the official medical provider for Purdue Athletics. Does a sudden sports injury have you on the bench? We can assist. Franciscan Health sports medicine specialists have mastered a team approach to sports injuries. You'll have access to a network of orthopedic professionals, rehabilitation services, and highly advanced technologies and treatments to get you back out on the field. To learn more, visit franciscanhealth.org slash sportsmedicine. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. This is Tommy Luce, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. Well, listen to coverage of NCAA championships on the Varsity Network app, powered by Learfield. Fans can hear Westwood One's exclusive national coverage, along with most school broadcasts through a multicast option. That's only on the Varsity Network app, available for free in your app store. 
Wisconsin 51, Purdue 49. Purdue, eight second half turnovers, including four in a row in the last four possessions. Just been a killer for Purdue. They've had a chance. They've done a nice job defensively. Wisconsin just two for their last 12 from the field. So you've been doing the work on the defensive end, but instead of being able to break the game open in your favor, you're unable to with six turnovers in the last five minutes. And now instead of having a nice little cushion with 8.21 to play, you're down a bucket. Zach Eady subbing back in for the Boilermakers on this last timeout. 8.21 to play here. Purdue down a deuce. 4-0 run for Wisconsin, aided by four straight Purdue turnovers. And live ball turnovers. Those are the ones, of course, Matt Painter just cannot stomach. Nor can any coach, quite frankly, in college basketball. Way out high to Gillis. Right wing, it goes to Colvin. Colvin lobbing inside to Edie. Cross-court pass to Smith. Braden grab by dribbling to the baseline to Gillis. Wide open three for Mason. Is a triple time. A wide open triple. Mason Gillis. Wonderful two-man game between Braden and Mason Gillis, but a questionable decision there by Chucky Hepburn. He leaves the guy with the ball, Mason Gillis, and allows the three ball. Store driving and blocked. Blocked, and then a play by Miles Colvin, saving the ball from going out of bounds it off of A.J. Store. Timeout on the floor. What a play by the freshman Colvin. He blocked the shot and then he saved it from going out of bounds to keep possession for the Boilermakers. On well, a Central Indiana Honda dealer scoreboard, Purdue 52, Wisconsin 51, 741 to play. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hi, Katie Gerald's here, head women's basketball coach at Purdue University. I'm a proud graduate of our College of Liberal Arts. My degree prepared me to connect with people and communicate well on and off the court, skills I use every day. I'm excited about the Degree Plus program, which allows all Purdue students to earn a Bachelor of Science degree and one from Liberal Arts and still graduate in four years. This and one can be a game changer. Check out the College of Liberal Arts Degree Plus program to see if this and one is a winner for you. We Boilermakers show our pride in a number of ways. From a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with the Purdue Federal Visa Signature Card, you have one more way to show your pride. Purdue Federal, the official credit card for Purdue fans everywhere. Federally insured by NCUA. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're good at insurance. But not just any insurance. We're good at... Fireworks don't go in the attic. Insurance. Hole in... Window. Insurance. Ah! Even... Guy that shouldn't have a chainsaw, but has a chainsaw. Insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. The time to save is now. It's Ford Truck Month at your local Ford dealer. And right now, we're offering special deals on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s in stock. That's right. Get great incentives on the best-selling trucks in America for 47 straight years. But you can't wait. This is a limited-time offer, and it's your last chance to save big on a 2023 Ford F-150. Check out all the great Truck Month deals at buyfordnow.com. And then get over to your local Ford dealer today. Gets you closer to the game than Sirius XM Big Ten Radio. Tune in for news, talk, analysis from the offseason through the regular season and now into the postseason. We've got Purdue covered anywhere you go. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. Rob Blackman, Bobby Riddell, George Bowes. We're courtside in Minneapolis at the Target Center. Purdue up 52-51. The last defensive block shot was actually credited to Zach Eady, not Miles Colvin. Both were at the apex. Yes. Eady got the credit. Colvin still with a really heady play to save that ball by throwing it off of the leg of Store out of bounds. So Purdue with a one-point lead and the possession. That's 7.39 remaining. Colvin playing here. Some valuable minutes in this Big Ten tournament. Braden Smith dribbling on the center logo. 
near side, right in front of our broadcast position, lobbing into Edie on the left block. Edie on crowd. Suits a right-handed hook shot, and there it is. There it is. Zach Edie has just become the leading scorer in the history of Purdue basketball. What a fun moment there, and sure enough, it's on probably his patented move, the jump hook with the right hand. Hepburn, a step back 15-footer, good. He answers for the Badgers. Purdue leading 54-53, under seven minutes remaining. Zach Eady, the all-time scoring leader in the history of Boilermaker basketball. Eady here on the left block on crowd. Holds the ball high above his head. Now we have a foul away from the ball on a Badger. I'm not sure which. Tyler Wall. Wall trying to get over the top of a Fletcher Lawyer screen. Runs him over. Four fouls on Tyler Wall. Does that sound right? It, yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. I had to double check my numbers there. Tyler Wall out of the game. Only two points in the game for a Tyler Wall that has been killing Purdue this season. Both games against the Boilermakers, Tyler Wall was dominant. The game in Wisconsin, he led them in every major statistical category. Every one of them. Right now, he's on the bench with four fouls. Inside it goes to Edie. Edie left block against Crowell. Spinning against Crowell. Shooting with a left hand but missing. Rebounded by Edie, who then dunks it home. He won't miss this time. Punching it home with two hands. Oh, I love Edie going with the counter move there to go to the left hand. He just somehow rims it off, but he stays with it. Two-handed monster flush. 56-53 Purdue. 6-15 to go in the game. Pleasant for the Badgers. Top side it goes to Hepburn. Hepburn off the screen from Crowell. Back to Crowell. Fakes it 18 feet. Dribbles to 15. Now gives back to Hepburn. Hepburn dribbling between the circles. Working his way to the left block. Shooting and was fouled by Braden Smith. Leaned into Braden, and Braden leaned back. And now Braden Smith has four fouls for Purdue. 56-53, six minutes exactly remains in the game. And Chucky Hepburn will be going to the foul line for the Badgers. Certainly a huge pivotal call there. Hepburn smartly gets into the body of Braden Smith. Puts the stress there on the officials as Hepburn rattles in the first free throw. And now Braden going to have to come to the bench with those four fouls. Well, wait a minute. No, he's going to stay in the game. They're going to take out Colvin. So Coach Painter, six minutes to go, figures let's roll the dice a little bit. And dice officially rolled. <laughs> Hepburn makes both foul shots. 14 points for Chucky Hepburn against an eight-point average. 56-55 Purdue. 5.55 to go. Over the timeline, right to left on a left-handed dribble. Lance Jones wearing the orange sneakers here. Inside to 80, bad pass from Mason Gillis. He put too much speed on that fastball and turned it over. 12 Purdue turnovers. Got to give some credit there to Carter Gilmore. Really pressuring Mason on the catch. Gets him off balance, fading backwards. Maybe made Mason put a little bit too much English or speed on that pass, and it fires over the top of Zach's right hand. Now Braden Smith will sub out with his four fouls, replaced by Camden Heidi. Heidi to play defense, and they'll try to get Braden back in when it's time to play offense, if indeed that situation presents itself. Badgers the ball, Purdue a one-point lead, five and a half to go. Here's A.J. Store to Gilmore, top of the key, swing it right side, Hepburn. Hepburn working off the screens from Gilmore. Back to Gilmore, shot clock at five. Lesmet went to drive, ran into Lawyer, foul on Lawyer. Two fouls on Fletcher Lawyer. Hmm. Fletcher tried to move his feet and guess right there and anticipate Klesmet ripping and going to the right, and he actually did a pretty good job. Thought maybe there's a chance he gets that call, but Klesmet, as the official says, Fletcher was in his airspace there. Five team fouls on Purdue here in the second half. Hepburn working against Lance Jones on the high right wing. Now to Crowell, back to Hepburn. Back to Crow, top of the key. Give it left wing to Store. The shot clock is at five. Store from 15, straight away, long off the back of the rim. Rebounded by Purdue's Zach Eady. Double double for Zach Eady. No surprise there. His 63rd career double double. 16 points, 10 rebounds. Purdue the ball. Purdue a one point lead. 4.50 to play. Heidi nearly traveled. Now the ball's lost up top. Picked up by Gilmore. Timeout, Wisconsin. Purdue wanted a held ball. Instead, Wisconsin gets credited a timeout with 4.47 to go in the game. 
Well, that was one where Camden Heidi caught it on the left wing. He got ready to throw the ball into Edie, and at the last second, a Wisconsin player dove in front of Edie. So then Heidi was kind of trying to double clutch, hold his feet on the floor without traveling all at the same time. And then he tried to throw the ball to the top of the key in panic mode, and it was stolen by the Badgers who were all over that ball. 4.47 to go. Badger basketball. Purdue a one-point lead. And then Purdue got unlucky there. Even though the possession arrow is favoring Wisconsin, you would love to flip that thing back to Purdue, and it should have been in that scenario. Lance Jones has two hands on the ball before Gilmore is able to signal for the timeout. I think Brian Dorsey, the official, would like to have that one back. But either way, it's going to be Badger basketball. We would have loved to have that possession arrow flip back here, especially late in this game. Purdue is at 13 turnovers. Why do I mention that? This season, Purdue is 23-0 when the turnover number is 13 or less. Right now, it's at 13. Up. Uh, wait. Yes, it is. <laughs> I thought I miscounted. It is 13. It is 13. You know, Purdue definitely puts themselves in a compromising position when it gets to this point. 440 to go. Badgers the ball. Purdue a one-point lead. A.J. Store, high right wing outside of the arc. Top of the key feed, Plesman. Now to Carter Gilmore. Will he pull the trigger on a three? Purdue wants him to. He made it. They were begging Carter Gilmore to shoot a three, and he did. His third made three of the entire season, and it's a two-point Wisconsin lead. Lance Jones brings the ball over the timeline. Well, hey, you live with it. Yeah, you're taking with that it. all day Absolutely. long. Carter Gilmore, only his third made three of the season. Here come the Boilermakers on a drive. Lawyer missed a runner. Picked up by Heidi. Out to Gillis. His three is on the way. And Purdue has retaken the lead. Thanks to a Mason Gillis triple. Oh, came to Heidi. A lot of credit on that one. He elevates for the big rebound and looks outwards. A beautiful chest pass right to Mason, who no hesitation splash. 59-58 Purdue. 340 to go in a ball game. Hepburn with a ball above his head, seeking out the post. Instead goes to Gilmore. Top of the key. Back to Hepburn right wing. Shot block at six. Chucky will drive. Kick out to Gilmore. Now to Crowell. Three on the way. No good from straight away. Rebounded by Purdue's Lance Jones. Boy, that one looked good from our angle, but it did not go into the basket. 322 remaining. Purdue a one-point lead in the bowl. Braden Smith on the bench right now with four fouls. Lance Jones running the show at the point guard. Inside it goes to Edie. Kick it out to Lawyer. History on the way. Trip The Boilers, Marksman's coming through in huge moments here. Back-to-back -back possessions, Gilly time, and then Fletch. Eight points for Fletch. Purdue's up 62-58, 2.55 to go in the game. Both teams now knocking down three-point shots. Hepburn from 15 feet away, good. Chucky Hepburn, 16 points. He's been dynamite today. Well, that's that one area against this Purdue defense. You can find some successes in that mid-range. Hepburn, nice job there using his body to create separation from Lance Jones. 2.35 to play. Purdue 62, 60 leaders over the Badgers. Shot clock at 13 into Edie. Out to Lance, right back to Edie. Spinning and shooting. He was fouled as he spun to the bucket. Foul on Stephen Crowell will take us to a television timeout. And we on the radio will take one as well. On the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard, Purdue 62, Wisconsin 60, 226 to play. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. You work hard. And at First Farmers Bank and Trust, we work hard for you. Since 1885, we've committed to helping families, businesses, and communities thrive financially. From home to the office, to the field, to the arena. We value hard work and perseverance as much as you do. Experience banking built on heart and grit today. Learn more at ffbt.com. First Farmers is a proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. I get paid to do this. How cool is this? Wow. It's like me getting paid to be a coach. <laughs> and for me, I don't think there's a place out there better for me than Purdue University. Hi, I'm Kate Young, host of This is Purdue, the official podcast of Purdue University. Over the last three years, my conversations with Boilermakers have been serious, informative, and in the case of that exchange with former Purdue basketball coach Gene Cady and current head coach Matt Painter, downright fun. Be sure to follow This is Purdue on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. 
If you're a Boilermakers fan, you know that scoring big is everything. Few things feel as good as watching your team pass, shoot, and dribble their way to victory. Off the court, you can experience that same feeling with a Magnum tractor from Case IH. Magnum tractors match the power, speed, and strength of the best Boilermakers by helping you net every challenge that comes your way. Score big with a Magnum tractor this season by visiting your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash Boilermakers to learn more. Boiler up! Higher yield potential starts with the season-long systemic disease protection of Zyway brand fungicides from FMC. Zyway brand fungicides protect corn crops from key foliar diseases and support physiological benefits that help develop healthier, higher-yielding corn for a difference you'll appreciate at harvest. Visit your FMC retailer for an at-plant advantage. Always read and follow all label directions. Sixty-two, Wisconsin sixty. Two twenty-six remaining in the game. The winner plays tomorrow for the Big Ten tournament title. Sixteen points for Chucky Hepburn. Sixteen for AJ Store. Sixteen for Zach Eady. Sweet sixteens across the board for the best players for the two teams. Purdue and Wisconsin. As we pause, ten seconds for station identification. This is Boilermaker basketball from Learfield. This one plays the winner of Nebraska and Illinois. They are our second game here at the Target Center coming up once this one goes final. Nebraska made it look easy against Indiana last night, especially with the way they shot the three-point ball. Ohio State gave Illinois all they could handle before the Illini ended up winning yesterday. Yeah, some fun basketball being played certainly here in the Big Ten Tournament. A lot of close games, and this one, no different. Five team fouls for each ball club. Each ball club has two timeouts remaining. The possession arrow favors Wisconsin. Purdue inbounding baseline left, leading 62-60. to Purdue lobs it into Edie on the baseline. Against Crowell, one step outside of the block from the left to Lawyer, back into Edie, who reposts, spins, and leaves it short. Rebounded, Klesman. Good offense there by Purdue, just didn't get the shot to go. Edie actually gives Fletcher Lawyer a high five on the way back. You say, hey, that was okay. Just didn't make the shot. Tyler Wall, right baseline. We're down to two minutes to go in the game. Two minutes remaining. Klesman on the back cut. Layup good. The game is tied. Ten points for Klesman. We are tied at 62 with 150 remaining. Really good action there by Wisconsin. Zach drawn just a little bit further away than probably ideal. Guarding Wall who can't shoot. That allows that back cut. Into Edie again against Crowell. And he was fouled from behind by Stephen Crowell. Stephen Crowell, four fouls. That's team foul six on Wisconsin. Purdue will inbound baseline left. It's their final foul to give. So Purdue will shoot one and one if there's another foul on the floor. 139 to go. Purdue 62, Wisconsin 62. This is just about the point in the game yesterday where Purdue broke a tie with a three-pointer from Lawyer. That came at the 118 mark. Right now we're at 138. Clock ticking. Braden Smith will drive, stop on the left elbow, and kick it to Gillis, shooting a three, but leaving it short, rebounded Klesman, and then he left. He fell down because he was tripped as he was getting the rebound by Mason Gillis. First foul on Gillis. Possession stays with Wisconsin. 16 fouls now on Purdue. Gillis tried to avoid the contact at the last second, but he couldn't Just quite. Just flipped his foot, yeah, basically. Couldn't but... quite get out of the way. 
Yeah, Mason, looking at that play back, wish he would have pump faked. It would have been given him a lot of time as the defender flew by, but unfortunately it was a really nice contest by the Badgers. Badgers could take the lead with a bucket here. Hepburn driving in right elbow, getting to the rim, kicking it out for a wall three. He lets it fly. It's no good. Rebounded by Purdue's Mason Gillis. 105 to go in the game. We are all square at 62 apiece. Timeout Purdue at exactly one minute remaining. And just another poor decision, in my opinion, by the Wisconsin Badgers from a shot selection standpoint. Bob Tyler Wall has made three threes all year. He's three of 12 coming into this game. In this game, he's attempted four. Four three-point shots. I mean, make it make sense, Rob. Make it make sense. Wisconsin is constantly taking ill-advised threes, in my opinion, way too early in the shot clock. I get it. If you catch it and there's four seconds left, like, okay, let's get one up there. There's a chance it can go in. Maybe you get the offensive rebound. But there's still plenty of time for Tyler Wall. There's no one on him. If he goes into a dribble handoff, his defender is not there to guard whoever's coming off that dribble handoff. You have a chance to get the ball to a store or a Hepburn or a Klesman coming off a handoff action, and they can take a shot that is, in my opinion, substantially higher percentage than you taking a three. And uh, But, hey, as a Purdue guy, I am happy he took the shot because now Purdue has the rock and there's a minute to play tie game. Yesterday, Purdue scored 67 points in the win over Michigan State. The 67 points, the season low. 67. Purdue right now at 62 as we're tied at 62. All right, what do we go to here, Rob? We got to get... Zach Eady, Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, one of these guys, a high-quality shot here. Purdue only one timeout remaining, and remember, the next foul puts the team in a one-and-one. One. That's for both sides now. Both teams at 16 fouls, so if either ball club fouls, and other, other teams going to the line here. We know that guy for Purdue wearing number two. Relish is taking big shots in these moments. Braden Smith has played over 30 minutes in this ball game. Not bad for a guy we didn't even know if he'd play today. Purdue throws the ball in for the far sideline, gives it to Braden Smith. Shot clock at 15, game clock at 55. Braden Smith to the left wing, dribbling between the legs. Started by Storr, now goes back to the right wing. Gives to Edie, underneath the bucket, cat the basket! Ha-ha! Just really good design there by Purdue. Braden Smith coming off a single, single ball screen. Gets downhill going down the right lane line, and he drops off a beautiful dime to Big Z, rolling to the front of the rim. Takes a little hit from Klesman, and you get the and-one opportunity. Huge free throw here to try to put you up three. Boilermakers at the line for an and-one. Purdue's degree plus gives students the chance to earn a Bachelor of Science and-one from the College of Liberal Arts, both in four years. Check out the Liberal Arts degree plus. See if and-one is right for you. It's right for Zach Eady. He knocks in the and-one. 19 for Eady. Purdue up three. 42 seconds to play in the game. The Badgers have the ball. Hepburn, left wing, now to the top of the key, hesitates, spins on Jones, shoots a floater, and missed it. Tipped at it by Wall. He lost it out of bounds. Throw saves it into Store. Store with a three to tie. Missed it on the left wing. Rebounded by Klesman, then lost out of bounds by the Badgers. Purdue has the ball with 25.1 to play. Will they review the out of bounds? I thought for a second that Rob Riley had signaled it was a foul on uh, Klesman, but no, he was just signaling out of bounds towards Purdue's basketball. Shot clock off, Purdue inbounding baseline right. They're not going to review. Must have been cleanly enough uh, seen by the officials that there's no monitor review. Out of bounds, Wisconsin. It's at the opposite end of the floor from us fans, so it's hard for us to see. But Purdue will inbound here. Fletcher Lawyer has to get the ball inbounds. Lobs it to Edie. Catches. Throws to Braden Smith, and it was tipped out of bounds by Wisconsin. This one they will review. Oh, Purdue had an uncontested layup. If Zach Eady's able to execute that pass up the right sideline, Braden is streaking with everyone else in the front court. 22.6 to play. You took the words right out of the back. Mouth. I guess everyone in the backcourt, excuse yes, me. Yes, everyone in the back. That was a design play that we saw Purdue talk about this morning in film. If that scenario presented itself, and it worked out perfectly, Edie catching at the top of the key with Braden sprinting down the far sideline. As you said accurately, Bob, if the ball is caught cleanly, 
and pass cleanly, it's an uncontested run-out layup for Braden. But because the ball was tipped out of bounds, far sideline, play stops, obviously, but now we have to see who touched the ball. Now, the call on the floor is last touched by Wisconsin. That's the call on the floor. Purdue ball. We're looking at multiple replays on the center hunt scoreboard. I can't, that's hard for the me to tell. The Badger faithful feeling like it wasn't touched. And that's where I'm not sure, like, you know, maybe part of the reason the pass wasn't on par is because Zach got hit on the wrist, maybe sure, say. Sure, yeah. And I don't think, yeah, they're going to give it the ball to Wisconsin. So they do say Purdue turnover, their 14th. And that one could be a backbreaker. You give the ball right back to the Badgers with Purdue leading 65-62. Literally, Purdue was centimeters away from having a run-out layup game over. I mean, Braden demonstrably right away kind of felt like, hey, that ball had to have been deflected or something because it did go well behind him. It does just feel like for Zach to miss Braden by that much, it had to have either been tipped, which we kind of feel like after seeing the play it wasn't, or he has to have maybe got hit on the arm. On the arm, yeah. Well, we can argue all we want from the uh, courtside broadcast position, but our opinion doesn't count. It will be Wisconsin ball. Uh, they are back at the monitor. I will assume for the moment they're looking at the time to make sure the time is correct at 22.6. The winner faces the winner of Illinois, Nebraska. Tomorrow, 3.30, here in the Target Center. Purdue defensively is going to play with Gillis and Lawyer. Was little, yeah, I was thinking maybe Purdue might go offense for defense here. I wonder if, are you thinking, though, on a made bucket right. or a takeaway, if you get fouled. You want your better foul shooters on the floor. Yeah, Lawyer with uh, with Braden Smith, Zach Eady, Mason Gillis, Lance Jones. All very good free throw shooters. Quite frankly, all good defenders. Fletcher Lawyer would be the weaker defender of the five, but I certainly understand that. And I'll give uh, Fletcher some credit. I feel like he has actually played some of his better defense here in this Big Ten tournament, but yeah, I think ideally you know you have one of your premier wing defenders in the game, but there's a lot of things going into it as we were just talking. Wisconsin inbounding, far sideline, goes into the backcourt to Hepburn. Clock ticking. Shot clock at 15, game clock at 18. Badger ball here, Crowd. Top of the key to Hepburn. Now we're at 10. 10, 6 on the shot clock. Hepburn will drive and make a layup, stopping the game at 6.5. Timeout, Wisconsin. So Wisconsin ran a play at the top of the key to try to free up a three-point shooter. It did not work. Instead, they then settled for the Hepburn drive. He got his way to the bucket. Braden Smith had four fouls, and he certainly wasn't going to give up an and one, so he just stepped out of the way, allowing the basket to be made. Purdue 65, Wisconsin 64, with 6.5 to play. Well, besides, of course, getting a stop, that, that was the next best scenario for Purdue there, of oh, making Wisconsin use a ton of time, not allowing them to get a three-pointer to tie the game, and now you still kind of control your own destiny here. Of course, this time we got to be able to get in. we got to be able to pass and catch. Uh, but then, you know, a couple seconds or at least a little time here should come off the clock. And then the scary part, though, is you will be taking a one-on-one. -on -one. Yep, so, correct. Yep. Um, and six and a half seconds, or probably say six seconds maybe would be left after a foul if it's caught directly on the inbounds. Six seconds is definitely more than enough time for someone to get down and get off a reasonable shot. But uh, obviously if you make your free throws, now you really feel good about being up three, around six seconds to go. That would be the time period where Coach Painter always goes to fouling um, if he's able to. And so uh, we'll have to just see how this all unfolds. Of course, first and foremost, get the ball in bounds and uh, get fouled and be, be secure. Purdue, again, can run the baseline. Yesterday in this position, Purdue was in it three times late in the game. Purdue, on the first time, put everyone out of bounds, threw the ball along the baseline out of bounds. This time, Purdue will put Mason Gillis as the ball handler to throw it in with Lance Jones out of bounds. Now to Fletcher Lawyer, who's also out of bounds. Throws into Edie. Edie fouled by Crowell. Crowell pushed him down, but helps him up with good sportsmanship. Chucky Hepburn also helping up Zach Edie. We only lost four-tenths of a second. We're down to 6.1. Foul on Crowell, his fifth, so he's fouled out. And at the foul line with a one and one is Purdue's Zach Eady, the school's all-time leading scorer. 
So six seconds to go. Of course, from a Purdue standpoint, you want him to make both free throws if possible. Coach Painter is talking to the team about if Zach makes both, how are we going to foul to avoid Wisconsin getting a three-point field goal attempt off? But if Zach misses this front end, it's going to be a race the other way, and Wisconsin going to have a shot to win the game. Um, of course, if he makes the first miss of the second, a similar scenario where a two would tie, three would win. But, you know, the good thing we're going to produce favor is it's going to be a pretty frantic situation even if Zach does miss. Wisconsin is going to have to execute really well in transition. 6.1 to play. Zach Eady at the line with a one and one. Today he's four of eight at the foul line. He dribbles one time. He bends the knees. He lets it fly and he made it. Now it's a two-point advantage at 66-64. Tyler Wall and Mason Gillis with a very... Aggressive box out of one another. And the official steps in and says, gentlemen, I don't want to see that again. Mason definitely felt like Tyler Wall did a little bit of extra stuff there on that one. Zach Eady with another opportunity. Dribbling once, bending the knees. The right-handed Canadian shoots and misses. It's a two-point game. Blackwell has it. Four seconds to store. Timeout at half court. Blackwell quickly advanced the ball to A.J. Store. He was two steps over the half-court line, along the near sideline, and A.J. Store immediately signaled for a timeout. Wisconsin uses its last timeout. The Badgers will inbound from the sideline opposite of their bench in the front court with 2.7 remaining. Officials, however, have gone to the monitor to make sure the clock should be at 2.7. Yeah, interesting decision there, of course, and a lot of this is hindsight 2020, depending on uh, the result of what happens. But, man, you, you do kind of put yourself in a pretty tight scenario here around three seconds or so. I kind of usually in favor of, hey, it's open court. Zach yeah. Eady's running back. You know, AJ like, has got run. the ball. Yeah. I'm kind of more in favor of usually that guy just going and making a play. I feel like he can usually get a decent shot off. Um, you know, but, hey, now you might be able to design something here and get a really quality look as well, of course. But... Uh, I'm more, if, I, if the ball is in someone's hands who I think I'm confident making a play with, I like that guy making a play. Obviously, if, you know, Stephen Crowell's got the ball 30 feet away. Now Purdue takes a timeout. Wisconsin came out of the timeout, set up what looked to be, uh, well, not what looked to be, it was going to be their offensive set for an inbound, and now Purdue takes its final timeout. Well, Purdue actually walked through today a little bit about maybe a potential defensive adjustment adjustment on a late game side out of bounds play that Wisconsin likes to run. Uh, I'm not sure they have enough time, Wisconsin, to actually run the play that Purdue went over. Um, is that's a play Tyler Wall would get the ball on a he would fake Tyler Wall would receive the pass, fake a handoff, and then drive the the lane line. 2.7. Not sure that's enough to you know Tyler Wall to be able to execute that kind of play. Uh, possibly, but that, that's a lot of things going to, you know, 2.7, you really need catch, one dribble, either catch and shoot, uh, or catch one dribble into a shot. I'm so glad you pay attention during film. I'm normally just looking at my phone. On, you obviously are paying attention. Gotta lock in. <laughs> just like a former player should do. It looks like Zach Eady on the basketball here. Tyler Wall is that inbounder. Wall waiting, waiting, waiting. Throwing in the corner to Hepburn. Hepburn will drive. He'll get to the rim, and he'll make the shot. He will make the shot to tie the game at 66 to 66. Chucky Hepburn got the ball on the right wing, put it on the depth, and got all the way to the rim. And we are headed to overtime. They will double check. But, yes, that ball looked to be clearly out of his hands in time. Chucky Hepburn ties the game with a layup at the horn. 66-66 our score, and we are headed to overtime on the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Purdue fans, say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light. 
and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog, because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Purdue 66, Wisconsin 66. How about we play five more minutes in Minneapolis? We're headed to overtime. Chucky Hepburn, the hero for the Badgers, getting himself to the rim for a right-handed layup just as the clock was expiring. 20 points in the game for Chucky Hepburn. 20 for Purdue's Zach Eady. And here we go to OT. And unfortunately for Purdue, that missed second free throw there by Zach Eady really loomed large. Wisconsin give them credit. Execution was really good. They were able to get the timeout at half court, and then they draw up something nice to get a, a guy like Chucky Hepburn the ability to have the ball in his hands and in some space where he could make a play and give Chucky a lot of credit. Braden Smith did a good job taking away the initial shot, but Hepburn quickly changed directions from right to left, got by him, and then Braden, you know, of course, not wanting to foul. Just that natural, you know, when you have four fouls, you don't want to swipe or anything. Uh, wouldn't want to give up an and one there either. Nolan Winter will jump center against Zach Eady. Remember now, no Stephen Prowl in overtime for Wisconsin. He has fouled out of the game. Winter wins the tip into the backcourt to Hepburn, and Wisconsin will have the first possession of overtime. A.J. Store, top of the key, left side, Winter on a chest pass to Hepburn. Chucky Hepburn dribbled in left elbow, out of wall. Purdue playing with Braden Smith on the floor with four fouls. Klesman, right wing, has the ball, stumbled for a moment, now has it back. Lobs it inside for wall, layup good. That was a very disjointed offensive possession that turned out super for the Badgers. Max Klesman really trying to draw a foul on Fletcher Lawyer. I thought dragged his foot and traveled, but they don't call it. And then eventually Klesman finds Wall rolling to the rim. Steal by A.J. Storr, the Badgers. They stole it from Braden Smith on a pass on the left wing. Badgers a two-point lead of the ball here. 50 seconds expired in overtime. Klesman to Wall. Swings it in the right corner. Chucky Hepburn. Hepburn wants to back down Braden Smith. Dribbles into the middle of the paint, kicks to store for an open three. It's long, no good. Rebounded by Purdue's Braden Smith. Purdue with a possession, 3.50 to go in overtime. Wisconsin 68, Purdue 66. Purdue twice played in overtime this year against Northwestern both times, winning one, losing one. Gillis a three on the left wing, good. Oh, wait, are they wiping off the bucket? What happened? We had a foul away from the bowl as Gillis was shooting a three on the left wing. Rob Riley, the official, called a foul in the painted area while Gillis was lining up for a three. Foul on Wisconsin. Again, away from the ball, but does the three-point shot count? Boy, this is going to be an interesting uh, decision. 3.40 to go in overtime. I just saw Coach Painter. He was telling the official, "It's when the whistle's blown." What What did you see on the on the foul? Well, it was the exact same play that Wisconsin kept doing against Purdue and Mac Arena just last weekend. Zach E sets a ball screen and dives. Wisconsin tries to get a player in there and take a charge on Zach while diving to the rim. They just try to get in his way and flop essentially as Zach rolls to the rim. And Coach Painter and their and the Purdue staff sent those clips into the Big Ten saying. We do, you know, this this is stuff that's happening. We don't agree with it. We want you to keep a lookout for it. These guys are just trying to, you know, basically get in Zach's way and take these charges. And, you know, Peru feels like it's a dangerous play because you have bodies flying to the ground. Um, and that's exactly what happened there. They tried to take a charge on Zach diving to the rim. And I'm not surprised that the officials who have been told about these plays, you know, they call the blocking foul. Let's see what they do here regarding the shot, though. While all of this was happening... Mason Gillis is making a three from the left wing. It looks to me that whoever the foul was called against, Tyler Wall is his fifth. Yes? Yes. So Wall fouls out of the game on the foul away from the ball. Three-point shot does not count. Am I correct? I am. There is no three-point basket. The foul definitely did occur well before Mason shot it, but the whistle occurred I after you. Mason had shot the ball. So I didn't know the... 
It was be interesting to see how that whole played out regarding the schematics of that. But. It's a one and one for Edie. 19 fouls in Wisconsin. Foul shot, good for Zach Edie. Boy, that was uh, that was interesting. Free throw, good. Makes it 68-67. Wisconsin leading Purdue. Tyler Wall is fouled out of the game. Stephen Crowell has fouled out of the game for Wisconsin. Braden Smith playing for Purdue with four fouls. Good news for Purdue. Double bonus now the rest of the way. Purdue down by one at 68-67. Now we're tied at 68. Both free throws made by EDU has 22 points. 3.38 to go. Badgers the ball. That burn to Gilmore. Right side handoff to score. Dribbling between the circles. Now right wing chest pass to Klesman. Klesman a screen from Gilmore to the right elbow. Top side to Winter. Left wing store. Store a deep three on the left wing. It is short. It's rebounded by Mason Gillis. Strong rebound by Gillis. That's his ninth rebound. Eight points. Very nine rebounds. Class. Yeah, what a, what a great effort from Mason Gillis here. The senior. Gillis. Left wing chest pass, Lawyer. Now left wing further to Smith. To Lance Jones, an open three on the way. It is missed. Rebound and Klesman, a foul on the floor. Edie was trying to get an offensive rebound and was being held by Nolan Winter. And now Nolan Winter has fouled out of the game. And this will be a two-shot foul opportunity for Zach Edie. Well, I think in, you know, whether it's a foul or not, how late the whistle came is also one of those that is always going to anger the fan base who doesn't get the call. Nolan Winter fouling out. Tyler Wall has fouled out. Stephen Crowell is fouled out. Wisconsin will have to play small because they're out of seven footers. Which actually might not be terrible for Wisconsin on the offensive end. Three minutes to go in overtime. Tied at 68. This is interesting to see them go as small as they're going to go here. Purdue, I presume, will switch four ways on the perimeter. And one would presume Purdue's going to throw it inside offensively. Oh, yeah. ED foul shot good. Purdue has a lead of 69-68, first to 69. Purdue this year, when uh, not this year, for a long time now, when Purdue's the first team to reach 69 points, they've won 95 games in a row. Second foul shot is good. Bounced off the front of the rim and went in. I'm sure Bill said, Bill Raftery over there said the iron was kind to Purdue the iron on that one. was kind of... Purdue up 70, 68, 250 to go in the game. Klesman, high right wing. Edie guarding Gilmore, begging him to shoot a three. He will do it. He will miss it. And Storr dunked it home. Nobody blocked out A.J. Storr for an offensive rebound and a dunk. Wow, that's unfortunately a missed box out there by Lance Jones. He's just caught ball watching a little bit as Gilmore shot that. Probably in as dis much disbelief as I was that Gilmore pulled the trigger. But, man, A.J. Storr got to the top floor on that putback jam. We're tied at 70. Purdue the ball. Inside to Edie against the smaller Badgers. Foul on Gilmore. Yeah, they're just so small defensively now, Wisconsin, that Purdue's going to just throw that ball inside each and every time. Gilmore fouling, putting Zach Edie back at the foul line. First foul on Gilmore. 70 to 70 the score. 216 to go in overtime. Purdue just puts so much pressure on the opposing defense with how relentless they are, throwing that thing into Zach. Braden Smith right there probably could have potentially taken a three off the bounce, but instead a wise move to find Zach inside as Zach switches the first free throw. 25 points for Zach Eady. Just adding to that total is Purdue's all-time leading scorer. Made the second foul shot as well. Six in a row for Zach Eady at the foul line. Purdue 72, Wisconsin 70. 2-10 to go in the game. Purdue beat Wisconsin 78-70 on Sunday. Plasma to three, right wing. It's short. Rebounded by whom? Lost on the floor. Picked up by Blackwell. High right wing for the Badgers. And he's fouled by Gillis. Trying to cut him off on a drive right side. And to the foul line with a one and one will go the Badgers. Foul on Mason Gillis, his second. Mm, that was a 
huge opportunity for Purdue to close out that possession with the rebound. Lance Jones, after giving up the putback last time, was well aware of that. Had a body on Store, but Store charging as well. Lance high jumps with Store. Lance looks like he had both hands on it, but bodies were contacting. It squirts out of his hand. Foul shot. No good. No good for Blackwell. Rebounded by Lawyer. Purdue catches a break because Blackwell's an 83% foul shooter. Missed the front end of a one and one. Purdue up 72 70. 145 remaining. We went to overtime, tied at 66. Braden Smith to the right elbow. Keeps coming downhill. Shoots a layup that misses. It's tipped around. It's rebounded by Edie. And then Zach fell down and took a timeout. He took a timeout as he was falling out of bounds or no. He did not get the timeout. It was he hard was, to tell because yeah, yeah, he was trying so hard to signal timeout as he was falling out of bounds. Baseline left. The official looked at Zach and decided no. No timeout is When the official way he was pointing from our vantage point, you couldn't tell if he was pointing at the bench for yeah, the timeout right. or whether he was pointing the other direction and he was pointing the other direction for the Badger ball. Store from the left elbow. Shoots and scores. We're tied at 72. A.J. Store with another big shot for Wisconsin. That's a tough pull up there by Store over the top of the outstretched arm of Lance Jones with a nice high contest there by Jones at the elbow. 1-11 to go in the game. Purdue the ball. Shot clock at 15. Top of the key, Lawyer dribbling. Now left wing, Braden Smith. Shot clock at 10. Game clock at 1. And a foul. Lance Jones faked a three. A.J. Store ran into him. Two fouls on Store. More importantly, two foul shots for Lance Jones. That's one you wish he would have just thrown it up at the rim because he would have had three foul shots instead of two. But that's easy to say hindsight. Yeah, but he was definitely was going into his dribbling motion when the contact occurred. So, yeah, that would have been a tough pivot, certainly, by Lance. And now two huge free throws here for Jones. Lance wearing the uh, the bright orange sneakers here for the Boilermakers. And missing the first foul shot. In and out for Lance Jones, who in Big Ten play shot 82% from the foul line. 58.7 to go. 58.7. And that thing hit pretty softly in the rim. Pretty surprised that thing didn't rattle in and drop, but big second one. Lance's second foul shot. That one is good. Then. Nine points for Lance Jones. Purdue leads 73-72, but the Badgers have the ball. 50 seconds remaining. Gilmore to Store. Store, the step back three with Lance Jones in his face. Missed it. Rebounded by Edie. And Edie was fouled as he grabbed the rebound. 46 seconds remaining. We walk right to left for a couple of free throws for Zach Eady. Ooh, a lot of tension in that while that ball was in the air. AJ Store taking a step back three. Obviously has the ability to hit tough shots, but if you're Wisconsin, probably would like a little bit better look than the, the step back deep three variety. Purdue able to close that possession with the board. Eady has 26 points. 12 of the 26 have come from the foul line. He's at the foul line here. 12 of 17 at the foul line. Zach Eady makes the foul shot. 18 foul shot attempts for Eady in this game. <laughs> now Camden Heidi subbing in for Braden Smith. Braden with four fouls. Smart. One more foul shot for Zach. Purdue 74. Wisconsin 72. Free throw. Good. Both teams one timeout. Uh, possession arrow favors Purdue. 44 seconds to go. Purdue by three, but Wisconsin the ball. Hepburn driving to the rim. Layup good. He just dribbled right past Lance Jones for an uncontested layup. Chucky Hepburn. Purdue has to get the ball inbounded here. And now we have a timeout. Purdue, Purdue yes. Purdue taking a timeout. 38.6 to go. Purdue 75, Wisconsin 74. Taking a timeout, I wonder, because you want Braden Smith back in the game now? Probably, yes. You are correct, sir. An interesting shot clock to game clock differential here, 8.6. Purdue, of course, going to work it down as long as possible, assuming they retain possession across half court. But if you're Wisconsin, 8.6, that's enough differential that you're going to assume Greg Gard and the Badgers will probably play this out. Yeah, sure. Hope to get the stop and go the other direction and, and get a bucket to win the game. Purdue, of course, if they're able to score, really puts the Badgers in a tough spot. And you'll be wondering if they're talking about it. If Purdue can get a two-point field goal, 
late in this clock, is that going to put that would put the time on the game clock in that scenario where Coach Payne would probably like someone to foul so they cannot get a three point shot out to tie the game. A three ball though wouldn't break our hearts, but the Boilers <laughs> have two possessions. How about the Badgers have made five threes in the game? Uh, I beg your pardon. Purdue has made five threes in the game. So, yeah, Badgers right. have made seven. Seven of 32 from three. Seven of 32 from three. Purdue does get the ball inbounded into Braden Smith. Full court pressure from Chucky Hepburn. Be careful now. Hepburn can take your ball. He has great hands. Braden does break the timeline. We're down to 15 on the shot clock. 25 on the game clock. Braden Smith dribbling. And called for a push on. Chucky Hepburn was harassing Braden Smith. Braden pushed off and he's called for his fifth foul. And Gat gives the ball back to the Badgers with 21.3 to play. Braden had done such a nice job that whole possession, handling the, the pressure of Hepburn, navigating that stuff, showed off some pretty nifty handles. But right there at the end, he was trying to get into a position to use Zach Eady's ball screen. Zach was positioned at the arc. Braden was trying to get down right to the arc level so he could use the screen, right? You're trying to get your defender to be able to run into the screen. Well, as he tries to get that momentum going to get to the arc level, his shoulder dives into Hepburn, and Hepburn wisely takes the contact, falls to the ground. But that's that situation there where you know he's trying to get to that position. I, I almost would have rather had Zach come out and set that screen higher up on the floor where that way made, or Braden could have got that relief a little bit closer to half court. Now the Badgers can play for the win. Shot clock off. Game clock at 15. Lesmet to the right elbow stopping. We're at 10 seconds. They throw it out to Hepburn. He wants to drive left elbow. Gives to Klesman. Klesman a floater in the painted area. Good. With 4.8 to play. Purdue's got to go. They're out of timeouts. Three seconds now to Lance Jones at the horn. He missed it. And Wisconsin beats Purdue 76 75. Well, an impressive upset win for the Badgers. They hadn't been able to take down the Boilers during the regular season. And now the Badgers get a nice marquee win for their resume. But if you're Purdue, you're disappointed, no question. But now you get back, rest a little bit, and get ready for the big dance. Wisconsin beating Purdue in overtime by the final score of 76 to 75. The Badgers got the final look offensively of the game for the most part. Max Klesman driving in and hitting the floater from about eight feet away. It proves to be the difference maker. Purdue was able to get the ball inbounded, racing the ball up the far sideline was Lance Jones, but he had to settle for about a 35-footer. Not a great, not a great look contested, but it was really the only option. And it goes begging off to the left side of the rim, meaning the Badgers knock off the Boilermakers in overtime, 76 to 75. Assistant coach Paul Lusk is joining us courtside, kind enough to give us a couple of minutes. His post-game comments presented by Saab, keeping people and society safe. Boy, Coach Lusk, a lot of things to cover here. I'll try to keep it brief. The fact that the turnover bug came back to bite us tonight certainly didn't help, including the turnover late on the offensive foul for Braden. Yeah, we just, at the end of the day, Rob, like, next week is what matters. Yeah. Take nothing away from Wisconsin. Give them credit. I thought they deserved to win. I thought they, they were the first to the floor. I thought they just wanted it more. Um, so give them a lot of credit. Looking at the way that first half unfolded, Zach Eady has those two fouls two minutes into the game. So then as a coaching staff, you're scrambling around a little bit, right? You're trying to trying to put yourself in a position to get a, 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 a group of five on the floor that you, you can trust. You, you play some really unique combinations of five, yet at halftime it's still 36-36. I thought that was a positive. Yeah, well, I thought the first half was really a positive for us. Uh, with all of the different lineups, I think that can help us going into next week. So I thought we did some good things. But, you know, I mean, overall, we just played poorly. I think some guys uh, struggled and, and give Wisconsin credit. But we'll bounce back. We'll be all right. Uh, we, we've been here like we won it last year. Uh, 
uh, it's time to get ready for the NCAA tournament, and sometimes a loss can do that. Well, as you mentioned earlier, right, there's this disappointment, of course, in losing this game. It goes down to the wire, but you had to be happy to see after what happened yesterday, Braden Smith out there looking pretty yeah. healthy, uh, able to get through the full game. That, that's exactly right. Everybody's healthy going into next week, and that's really important. Give us an extra day of rest, and we'll be just fine. And we will take that. Coach Thanks, Lutz, thank you. Coach Lutz, post-game comments presented by Saab, keeping people and society safe. The final score in overtime, Wisconsin 76, Purdue 75. The fifth-seeded Badgers move on to the Big Ten tournament title game tomorrow. The number one seed, Purdue Boilermakers, suffered just their fourth loss of the season. Our post-game show begins when we come back. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Purdue fans, say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create